We're hot. So we're you loaded. don't want an intro? You want an intro then? I mean, I don't mind. No. No, no I'm not like, too fast. No. Like intro, dude. <laughs> All right. Well, sweet, dude. Honestly, uh, I, I think everyone knows Manked Up Maze, so... But welcome, bro. Glad to have you to the podcast. Uh, bro, what a weak no? introduction. What yeah, do? what you mean? What do you do? What do you do? <laughs> now I feel like I'm on the spot. There's no intro Maze. now. Oh, I'm, just, I'm just out here, you know? I'm just living, I guess. I don't know. Okay, here we are, boys. We're with Manked Up Wit Mage, a.k.a. Sebi Woo Woo. The man, the myth, the legend. The soon to potentially be a J mod, Manked Up Ooh. Mage. Manked, if they if they actually did make you a J mod, um, what would your what would your J mod name be? I mean, I think it kind of has to be mod manked, right? It just has yeah. a nice ring to it. I feel you don't want to be does. mod mage. No, mod no mage. I'd, be mod, I'd be mod manked. It's got more of a nice ring. To it's it. more okay. unique. It's more unique as well because, like, yeah, I think mod mint wouldn't be a bad one, but they're never going to employ mm. you, Mike. Sorry, bud. <laughs> you think if they did, I get a shirt or? Like what no. are the <laughs> No, <laughs> just be sitting there shirtless, dude. Man, they'd make dude. you they'd make you pay for everything. Dude, everything. Damn. Extra to ten percent more. Uh, is it, Manx, you've been to you've been to Jagex like multiple times, haven't you? Yes. You've been to like the headquarters. Um did you did you go up into like the like the work area where they have like all the computers and the J mods sit and such? Yep. Yeah. Did you ever um, yeah. Did you ever go into like their little canteen they have up there? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, because I went to the uh, special effect charity event, so we, uh, we kind of got a tour of everything, and uh, yeah, no, it was really good. Yeah. And to be fair, I've I've received so many free like tops and stuff and jumpers from like events. So uh, honestly, half of my oh, wardrobe yeah. is literally just Jagex merch. Oh, dude, you're making Mint so jealous right now. <laughs> <laughs> Must be nice bro do you also have like a big printable weapon they give out sometimes dude oh curtis has got loads of those hasn't he oh, he's got RPG. one of course he's got one dude this is my dream to have one of these oh, oh man, it's so <laughs> good bro i bet it's signed by mod ash on the hilt with a heart um, bro i wish i wish um funnily enough i've got another one if you want to see it yeah show us man oh yeah it, it's, a it bit, over. it's a bit bigger though so uh one second Oh man! By the this way, we we should we, we should also say by the way, chat. Oh shit! Oh the my fuck? gosh, bro! You could slay someone with it. The BGS. Yeah, it's, a, it's a whole god sword. Man, that's nuts. Right. Yeah, right. You what should you mount think that about to this? the wall. Yeah, let's let's hear the Raisu opinion on what this one. What are you thinking then? about this, bro? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> So, so the reason why Rice is like that, by the way, he slept in. This is an hour earlier. This man, I called him six times, dude. So if in, in, in the comments down below, just just type wake up chat. You know what I mean? Bro, I, <laughs> wake I, up Rice. Yeah, dude, that has to be the word of the day, but it's too early. We'll think, we'll think of something in like an hour or so, and then we'll we'll put the word you in. You want to test him? You want to test yeah, him, dude? Yeah, of course. Angler it's it's, it's only, dude, the word is only for the viewers who watch every moment of the podcast. Like, we're talking like the real ones. You know, the ones that got the tattoos. The OGs. Yeah, the tattoo wielders. Dude, who do you think... Alright, if one of our fans, bro, was so dedicated to get a tattoo of one of our faces, who would it be and where? What, you, are you assuming that we know the name of our fans? <laughs> Dude. <laughs> Dude, I, no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm saying which one of us would have our, our our face tattooed on their body and where would they put it? It, would, their it, would, be fans name it. it would be you because you're, you're like constantly on about your cheeks getting clapped and stuff and they could easily <laughs> just get a picture of your face and put it on their ass because it's like a joke. And then every fucking person ever is going to be like, why the fuck is there a random bearded homeless dude on your ass? And they'll be like, oh, it's a long story. Don't worry about it. <laughs> oh, God, I hope... I hope not, bro. But at the same time, I would also be quite honored to be landing upon someone's ass cheeks with my face. But I hope I, not. <laughs> have, have you ever, have you ever had that actually, where somebody wanted to get like a tattoo of, of like you or like your logo or something like that? Nope, can't say I have. Mine. I, I think one of my viewers wanted to get an emote. I'm not sure if he ever done it. I actually have promised my viewers I would get a tattoo way back when, and then I never got it because I'm way too shy to go into that very manly tattoo place and go, how does this work? You know? Oh, no, uh, dude. That's chill, I man. owe them one. I know. 
I gotta, I gotta get it done. I need someone to come in with me though. I'm not manly enough to just sit there and have someone needle me and then make like side conversation. Someone's gotta be there. You know what I'm saying? That's what's stopping me. I, I just see. can't just. Man, you should. Yeah. Next time you go to like a sand, this, well, this was at a TwitchCon. This picture of rice. Is mm-hmm. that right? You should do it when you do that next. Like that would, that would be the perfect time to do it. Next TwitchCon, bro. I'm getting that too. I promise my viewers, dude. Um, also, going back to the first convo of Manked Up Mage as a J mod, I really enjoy that line of questioning, dude, because it's like a great timeline that I hope exists in the future. What would be your first act, dude, as a J mod? Well, unfortunately, I think if I did get a job, I wouldn't have much say in terms of what I would work on. I'd kind of be told this is what we plan to work. Uh, this is what we're planning on working on. Um, and they'd kind of put me on stuff. So if in an ideal world, if I could choose what I'd work on, um, it would be BH, just wieldy content in general, PvP worlds, you know, mainly obviously PvP focused. Um, I'm also quite interested in like mid game and just having yeah. a bit more content there. And obviously like challenging end game and like competitive <laughs> stuff. Um, I love Dead Man. I love All Stars. I'd love to have stuff like that in the future. Um, but the only thing that will suck is I won't be able to compete in any of that because I'll be working for them. So yeah, um, dude. Yeah. So to 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 go to go back a little bit for the people who are watching because I, I feel like we know quite well like the situation and your story and such. But um, you obviously went from being full time content creator uh, and then you said, "Hey, I'm going to step down from this and I'm going to pursue um, coding." and see if i can get a job at jagex and like work for the company and on the game that i love so do you want to give like a a little backstory to all of that and like where you're at right now yeah um so i started full-time streaming i'd say in 2016 i made youtube videos in i think i started in like 2009 Oh man, um, yeah, I, I was subscribed to you way back when you used to do yeah. like DH videos and stuff, like yeah, yeah, yeah. way back in the day. I, I've been, oh, that's yeah, cool. I've, I've been sub, I've been a fan for a long time, bro. A long time. <laughs> yeah, so I started back then, uh, went full time after university, would have been 2017 actually, because I graduated <laughs> and then I was like, I'll just try streaming for a while. Uh, so I streamed from 2017 until 2021, the end of it. And then towards the end of 2021, I kind of decided that streaming just wasn't stable enough for me. Like whenever Deadmans came around, the support was crazy and it was amazing. But for the other time, it was really difficult for me to kind of sustain myself. And, you know, I I couldn't see myself long term um, being a content creator. And the the unpredictability was really scary for me. And it is really hard work. Uh, A lot of people will say it's not, but it is truly hard work. Um, so I decided to stop doing that and uh, pursue uh, coding or programming. Uh, so for the last year, I will say, um, I've been learning to code. Um, and I did actually apply to Jagex in September, I want to say. And it was about a month long process. Unfortunately, didn't get the job. Um, I was like a finalist for that. Um, but then some exciting news for you guys that I'll be telling uh, oh, let's go first. Um, let's go. I, it, wait, wait. Is this, is this uh, world's first? Does anyone this is know the about world's it? first? Oh, no one knows about this apart from my family and Kate. Um, like so I uh, went for another interview last week, and I got the job. Yes, so, yo! Let's go, the wilderness dude. is yeah. saved, dude. Oh, Bounty hunters back. Bro, PVP's <laughs> back. Everything. Yeah. Dead Demon's oh. back. All Madness. guarantees he's making right now, right? Holy I'm shit. shit. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wish. I hope yeah. So. No, seriously, so, congratulations, bro. That so is, yeah. what, is the, what is the job that you went for? What, what's the role, mate? Uh, so, junior content dev. Oh, sweet, man. So, I'll be starting that in uh, just over a month in January. Dude, my chances of getting a shirt now are like... <laughs> 10% higher. <laughs> Fuck yeah, bro. I'm wiggling my way in there. This is my I make friends with people who are not J mods and then they become J mods and that's the that's the strat I'm really going for here. All right. So <laughs> Oh my dude, that's that's literally like the fucking that's made my day. That's straight up that's made the best my day. News that really real. has. Like I remember yeah. I remember when you um you got declined for the first job. I'm pretty sure you came into my Twitch chat and we were talking briefly on it, weren't we? This was a few months ago. And 
Oh man, I remember I remember like just feeling like a little bit sad after that conversation because I, I could tell that you were a little bit like upset by it and like you said that you were gonna go and like pursue something else and you couldn't wait around to like get a job at Jagex, which I totally understand. But there was there was a part of me that was just like, I really hope that he reapplies. Cause like it it's so clear that like you like here's the thing, I got so much admiration for you because you went from being like you know, I love this game, and we know you love the game. You were a content creator. You've won many, many of their esport competitions they've done and such. Uh, and then you're like, do you know what? I actually want to put my stamp on the game. I want to improve things. I want to try and bring more to the table. Uh, and you literally said, I'm going to go and learn how to use the computer technology language of coding and programming, which is way above my pay grade, and I don't get it whatsoever. So, like, man, that is fucking amazing. Like honestly, well done, dude. That is that is fantastic yes. news. Holy shit! And do, do you know what? You're not the only J mod that's returning as well. So I don't know if you've you've heard this, but it was on Twitter a few days ago. Mod Sween. Mod Mac K. Oh. Okay. <laughs> mod, mod Sween is returning as well. Um, yep. I'm trying to think what he said that he was doing though. Dude, was it our podcasts are going to be crazy in December then? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> thinking about it. Oh Matt, my you give God, spoilers, bro. On, bro. What do you mean it's gonna be crazy? Wait, hold up. Are you saying that there's a potential we might have mod sweet on at some point? <laughs> I mean, I feel Maybe. like I feel like we'd have to get like a certain amount of likes on this video for that to, you know. I don't know, dude. Can we get a certain amount of likes? Never mind. I want to bring that up. <laughs> Right. Anyways, boys, <laughs> like like the video if you haven't done so already. It helps push the videos. Leave a comment. All of that good stuff. Big things coming, boys. No matter what. But man, that's but that, yeah. that's awesome. So you start in January. Um, yeah. what what was the interview like this time? Like, how did it all go? It sounds like it went a lot faster. You said the first time was a month yeah. and the second was a week. Uh, yeah. No. Um, I don't want to go too into it because I don't know how um all of yep. that works. Um, but yeah, the first time round took. There, there were a few more steps to it, and then the second time there weren't as many. Um, so I'm, I'm not sure why that reason was, but um, I'm happy how uh, the outcome has uh, oh, happened. Bro. So yeah, so, I'm, so, I'm really you know, excited. You know how cool that's going to be, though. Like, what other J mods want a dead memo tournament? You're just going to walk <laughs> into the office and they'll be like, "Hey, you're a gangster." You know, like who else has done these things? You just gonna walk, and everyone's going to know your name. They know what you want in RuneScape. They know you're going to enjoy that shit too. What a perfect job, bro. Honestly, yeah. congratulations, Mandy. What's the Thanks. what's the process of getting there? Like, do you like you gotta travel there? Are you already there? Get a house nearby? Like so it's hybrid. So I can kind of choose. I think it some days there will be days that I have to go in, depending on what it is, but uh, I can choose whether I go in. But I think at the beginning, um a lot of it's training for the first few months. So I'll probably will try and go in as much as possible when whoever's training me is in because it's just a lot easier to learn in person, I think. So yeah. I can, it's just a lot easier to ask questions and all of that. So yeah, that, that's the plan. Um, I'll probably end up doing the Easter event potentially. Um, but then, yeah, the future, like when there's, if there's a dead man in the future and all of that stuff, I can't wait to hopefully work on it if I'm allowed to. Um, because whenever it's come in the past, I've always had so many ideas and like possibilities of what I'd like to see. So mm -hmm. now I can actually voice those opinions and, and hopefully, you know, add something extra to these events and, um, yeah, just make them really fun and exciting, I hope. Oh, man. So when you had your, your interviews, were you interviewed by, like, J-Mods that we know or was it was it people that were behind the scenes? Um, I'd say a bit of both. There were some people that obviously I didn't really know, but, um, yeah, no, it, it was a bit of both. A bit of both, okay. Man, that's what, what are you most excited about right now? What am I most excited about? Yeah, like Probably just working just, there. Or... Yeah, just dude, just thinking about RuneScape. Like as weird as it sounds, I always like late at night. I go to bed, right, and I don't know why, but this is when my brain functions the most. Me and too. I literally lay down, and I'm just thinking about something, and I'll think about like an update or something in game, and I'll think like, what what would be better for this, or what what could could uh, we do to change it? And then I just start popping all these ideas out. And it's all really fun, but obviously I'm trying to sleep, so it annoys me as well. But I, I love just thinking about what's in the game and the future of the game and what could be done. And all of that just really excites me. So to be able to think about that week after week, month after month, you know, that that's just super exciting. 
You're going to um, have to have a notepad by your bed so you can yeah. make all these changes into RuneScape. That's what I do. If yeah. I ever, because my brain works the same way. So I got to jot this down or it's just gone. Yeah, no, literally <laughs> same. If I don't write it down, it's gone as well. Man, that's, that's crazy. So I, I think, I think something, well, we've spoken about this, so we're, we're aware of this, but for people listening to this for the first time, I think that there is uh, a, an amount of like expectations that should be realistic in this scenario because you know like we know you're a pvp -er, um but you overall enjoy the game and you'd love it and um like we touched on before it's like when you start your role at jagex it's not a case of manx gonna be able to like you know i want to work on pvp that's what i'm doing today so you probably know so much more about this than obviously we do so like what what is the process have they told you like how it's going to work like how you're going to be assigned projects uh what you're allowed to work on in your free time and stuff have they have they touched on that um to an extent i've been given like a brief overview of what happens and you kind of get you're in teams and you get assigned projects to do and they obviously plan everything like quite far ahead um like you see in their roadmaps that they put on uh, Twitter and they talk about. So uh, I'm not going into this expecting, oh, day one or day or week week 10, I'm going to be able to work on whatever I want. I'm just going in with the attention of, I love the game. I want the best for the game. I will work on any part of the game that I'm told to. So I'm not expecting to, you know, change it dramatically. Um, but mm -hmm. I will be there for when there are updates to PvP and stuff like that. I'll be able to put my input and hopefully... I think I'm pretty uh, not biased for those updates, so it should be a good benefit for them. Because um, recently I, I played my Iron Man and I was doing loads of wieldy content and I was for once the prey and it, it opened my eyes quite a bit to what people experience in the wilderness. So it, it changed my perspective quite a bit on what the wieldy should be. Um, so yeah, no, I'm just uh, excited for that. But yeah, I'm not going into this thinking I can change everything and I hope everyone that sees me get that has uh, sees me get the job doesn't expect me to be able to change everything because i won't be able to and yeah. we have to be realistic about that but i will do my best to uh push the game forward in a in a positive direction mm -hmm. and I, to be fair i know for the last few months from what i've heard the jane mods how they've talked about pvp i think there has been a massive shift internally um of, of their opinions and stuff of, of how PvP has gone and how it's going to be treated in the future. So I'm super hopeful for it. Uh, let, like Even if I didn't get the job, I was still pretty hopeful for the future of PvP anyway. Yeah. So do you have an example, by the way, of um, like the way that they might be approaching PvP slightly differently going forward? Like you said, you heard something? Well, no, I, di I didn't. It's not necessarily that I heard something, but it's the way they've kind of talked about it. Because in the past, PvP was kind of just ignored. Um, but then on like uh, streams and stuff, they've acknowledged, okay, we actually understand that PvP has been kind of shafted to an extent and ignored. Um, and so, for example, the wilderness changes to the bosses. That's in itself quite huge. Yeah. Um, and and the, the Karasu passing a pole again is also really huge because that's going to be some really hopefully fun content the boss is going to be some really fun content and that's hopefully just a shift in the right direction for the player base but then also for the game like they, they've clearly thought a lot about okay what do the players want and what what can we provide for them and they've given it to us and it's all past the pole so yeah. i think they've done a really good job of that and yeah it, there's nothing be, it's not it's not been anything specific with what they've said um about their mindset changing for PvP, but I've just heard them talk about it a bit more than they have in the past. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it, I'm hopeful. It is, yeah, seeing it in the blogs. I mean, even the Wilderness Key update, I think we all kind of forget how good that is. Like, we don't have to pick up loot as peasants. Like, this year may not have been the year of PvP, but damn near, we got some good stuff. I, I keep telling people, the winds are changing, bro. 2023 yeah. I, I think is where it's, it's going to be. On top of that, I think um, I, I'm really glad to hear it. And like, considering this is the update that passed with the with the Wildy Boss rework is probably one of like the bigger PvP updates we've had. Like a lot of PvP updates come in the the form of like like Mint said, like the bank keys, for example, which are like it's such a like a small little thing, but it makes such a huge difference for people that enjoy that content. <laughs> but like 
Yeah, the the Slayer boss, or sorry, the uh, Wilderness boss rework is huge, and it all passed like with flying colors, all of it. So it's like it's probably given Jagex, you know, it it might have like reignited a, a flame to kind of like think more and it's not just doom and gloom it's like hey you know maybe if we produce uh, the potential update we're going to bring to the game in a certain way it might be able to get more votes because we covered uh the update the wilderness boss rework and uh, i think we even had mod goblin on for one of those episodes as well and we spoke all about mm -hmm. it and i i think the something that they did which was really smart and um <clears throat> I, I think that in the past, when it's come to PvP, they've focused on, like, certain crit criteria that maybe they're not, like, the most knowledgeable about. But this time around, it's like they focused on the bosses themselves, and they focused on the environment that the boss was going to be in. Which, quite frankly, as we all know, is something that Jagex are really good at. It's like, dude, have you mm -hmm. done PvM in RuneScape? I know Mint has, but Mint hasn't. But I know, like, Wait, it's no, fantastic. Hey, I've done some Zora. He does a Zora, yeah. <laughs> Zora. What, dude? Yes, yeah. Sir. I think that's, is that like the extent of your PVM? Oh, you did some TOA well, when it came out, actually. I actually had an Iron Man that was pretty kitted, right? And did mainly everything that was out at the time. But I mean, then it got hacked, and then you have all these crazy raids. So I, that was like before then, I mastered everything. And then after that, I was just slapping cheeks. <laughs> but to go back into what you were saying as well, not only are they working on the the bosses, the atmosphere. I mean, if you go in the wild and you look around, it's like a burnt crisp. You know, like an asteroid hit it, nothing. It, it, everything's the same, stalagmites, whatever. They're finally going into nice detail. And they're being smarter about these updates too. Like they'll go back and they'll rework the spammable entrance, dude. Or like I said, the loot keys. And now we're seeing that when the wilderness bosses do come out, you have to go through the whole content. There, there are no half-assing. There's no getting around this content. You want to go farm that Karasi, you're going in one way, coming out another, and you better hope no one's waiting for you, right? None yeah. of this wilderness altar, butt naked, envy of bone, suicide. So I don't know. To me, I've been observing everything going on in the wilderness forever now because I'm weird. And just seeing these little actions makes me so hopeful for the future because that's kind of what we need. Uh, just something that every little niche and detail that forces you to do the content, to create the content. And that's what I'm seeing. And hopefully I'll see a lot more of that. Yeah. I think as well, um, like I was saying, to touch back on it, I, I think probably a big part of the reason why this time it passed is because of what the focus of it was which was the actual bosses themselves. Uh, and like I was saying, like we, we all know that Jagex actually, they, they got their shit together when it comes to PVM and like environments for bosses and such. So I'm really hopeful for that in itself. I, I, I think that there's a lot of potential that could come from this rework. And um, not, not even to mention like, this is something I feel like gets glossed over all of the time and people don't really talk about this too much. But like, for the longest time, literally since like the beginning of the game, probably the biggest PK scene was multi, right? It's like you had mm -hmm. teams that would war all weekend long, whether that was pures or max mains, whether that was free to play or members. And some of these wars would take like days, like where they would just continuously go. And like, th this is the thing. I was never really into that. That was never really my kind of PKing. But I, I can acknowledge that there was a lot of people that loved that. And I, like it was a massive community of people that really enjoyed that content that just dried up and disappeared almost overnight. It, it's like, I, I don't know if that was just a case of like, as time gone on and people have like been less engaged with it. Or maybe it's a case of, you know, maybe if Jagex were to have had more options for these clans, then, you know, maybe they'd still be thriving. But something I have to have to admire with this update is like, this is going to be huge for multi because the whole update is in multi and I'm not even somebody who's really going to benefit from that, but even I'm excited because I know there's oh, so many some, people bro. that are going to enjoy this content. Imagine, bro. Me and you volatile staffs main game and we just hit the same guy, bro. We just hit <laughs> gone, bro. How fun is that going to be? We're, it, I'm down. Dude, it'll be fun so all up until the point when we get maced out. Yeah. But then yeah. I get to watch your ass. <sighs> Because they can only mace one. I'm gone, bro. I'll hit you in the kneecaps. Bounce. 
Oh, Easy, dude. My guy. <laughs> yeah, um, Mink, what what are you feeling about this update coming out? Like the, you were talking about before uh, the podcast about the wilderness bosses. What, what are you thinking about it? Yeah, no, um, I think they've done it really well. Like the way they pulled the weapons, the focus of the weapons were to help you escape. Yeah. So that in itself were like that's that's a really good outlook and and uh, message to promote to people because they were uh, they're literally going to be additions to the weapons to help PVMers. Uh, combat the PKs and escape them, which is amazing, and hopefully that's what helped it pass. Uh, the Karasi, that passed, and that's going to be a super fun weapon. Uh, again, so I'm super excited for that. I think they did something really well, uh, which is it's not actually only multi. There's also a single spot for each of the bosses, uh, respectively. So you're not only giving people a new area to explore with their friends in multi, but if you've got people that are Iron Men or they just want to play solo content, they've also got that solo place to go. And that means, you know, kind of everyone has something for them. You're not locked out of content because it's multi. Um, so, yeah, I, I think it, it's like a perfect update because everyone's involved. There's no, honestly, there's no real um, bad things associated with it. it. It should all be good. And I don't think anyone can really lock it down because of the mechanics they've put in place um where you have to go through the whole system uh so yeah uh, overall i think it's an amazing update obviously who knows well we'll have to see what happens uh maybe it, people will find a way to lock it down but again there's the single variants so you can always go there mm -hmm. um yeah, yeah it's really exciting it is it, yeah really I, good. I what, like... what, what makes you more like what's what excites you most still like what item mm. is the karasi is it an attachment coming out um, for me, it's the Karasi because it just adds a lot of variety. Um, PKing right now, you a lot of people just use the uh, Ancient God Sword, and it is pretty, you know, boring. Everyone typically just prays melee uh, when they're low HP, and it's super boring. But you introduce the Karasi at fifty percent spec as well. It's gonna mix up a lot. I forgot of that fights. past. Yeah, so it's gonna good. be crazy, dude. It's gonna be so much fun. Hopefully. And the new spec ring, which is cheap, mm. by the yeah. way. I don't know if those will go up when they cross. I feel like probably not. So they might maintain their cheapness. They are very cheap. Mm. Like 5 mil, I think. 10 mil. Does anyone know? Rice probably knows. What Rice? What do you, what do you think? Yo, what do you think he's thinking of when he's sleeping like that? I think he's counting trees, dude. Jackie just sees XP like in his head. It's just like XP just like slowly... He's probably soloing Chambers of Xerix in there just <laughs> from so many times. He's probably just... You ever have a RuneScape dream, bro? I've had, like... Yeah. I don't, have I explained my RuneScape dream on here? I can't remember. It's uh, remember. You probably have. Tell us. I'll tell you if I've heard it. Okay. So I'm in a library. Did that catch anything? No? No, not yet. There's a dream, by the way. And I'm sitting next to my high school crush. This was in high school. And she's like, can you, can you grab a book for me? All right. Beautiful Tina girl. Nice. Go to the library, librarian. I'm like, hey, can I get this book? She didn't say nothing. Took a bit, trying to get back to the table. So I just AGS spec her, right? Gone. She dead. Her wig flies up, hits the table, and then there's a book on there, right? You got the book and the wig, and I loop both. And that was the only RuneScape part about it. I go back to the table, everyone's black, and my girlfriend has dreads, and then I wake <laughs> up, dude, I don't know, bro. Like, it don't make sense, but it was... I, I PK'd someone. I guess it's Reunions gave me. Bro, I, I actually had, because I was playing uh, loads of Tarkov like a few months ago, and um, I had a crossover dream with Tarkov and RuneScape where oh, shit. I, I was on Labs, and Labs, for those that don't know, on Tarkov is like the end game map. It's like, it costs mm -hmm. to get in there. The loot's insane. Like, But like, the best players go there. Like, they're fucking destroy you. I had a dream that I looted um one of like the the armor caskets and I found a third age plate body. <laughs> it's just, like, the most random Hello. random crossover. My brain was just a mess. <laughs> Dude, I've had that where I've got like a bill PK and I get really happy and then I wake up so sad, dude, because I know I cannot make a video anymore. Um, Mank, do you have any RuneScape dreams? By yeah, the way? yeah. I mean, I have them kind of every now and then, but my most memorable was uh, back in 2007, 2008, when bounty hunter creators were a thing. And I know Rakesy knows of them because I remember seeing him dying in Wacom PB's video, I think it is. Yep. 
That's so, it. Nice. It's, it's I see Rake your. Do you, just real quick, I see Rakesy in the back of so many OG videos. <laughs> did he watch in like a bounty hunter video and his ass running around with a whip in the back i'm like what the fuck dude it's, so it's like 20 years ago yeah. sorry yeah, yeah no, uh so it was bounty hunter creator days and i had a dream that i got a i think it was a green party hat or it was just a party hat into the craters but then in the dream i realized you couldn't bring on tradables in there i think yeah so then i knew it was a dream and then i woke up all really sad because i was like fuck I got, I got the party hat and I couldn't take it out and yeah, but uh, no, that was uh, that's probably my most memorable uh, RuneScape dream. Do you want to give a rundown of what Winter Summit is and when it's coming up? Yeah, sure. So, to me, from what I was told before this podcast, mm -hmm. uh, it looks like it's effectively like announcements, right? Kind of like what you get at RuneFest, but they're doing it over over uh, December. So we've got things to look forward to in twenty twenty three. Um, and that's probably about all I have. <laughs> I don't really that, know much a, else. That's a good summary, to be honest. <laughs> okay, so that's, Mank, that's do you know more about it. this? I believe Mank's pretty deep here. No, uh, I no. think it's pretty, <laughs> much, pretty much what he said. Honestly, they're doing like some teasers over the next few days. I think they've already done four of the six. And then on the 10th, it'll just be a stream. I think it says it up there. They're just doing a stream where they talk about um, what people are working on uh, and what's coming out. Uh, and they talked about a league that will be coming out that they won't be talking about, but we can expect a league in 2023. Um, so I think it's nice. just that. It's just it's just to hype everyone up, I think, which is pretty cool because RuneFest used to do that and it, those announcements used to do that. And mm -hmm. when I was a content creator, hearing what was coming out used to give me a lot of uh, um, hope and just the direction for the game. So it was always really good. And, yeah. yeah, really happy. They this. they got a couple like question marks right there, and and Mate said, yeah, if you go down the roadmap reveal, apparently a couple of those have already been uh, it, uh released, right? Hints. Bro, no so one knows what they are. December tenth, we we I hope we'll know, and we're gonna try to give our best guesses at some of the hints that are coming out uh, to our knowledge, which is almost zero. So, but I'm sure it'll be good. There's some pretty good reveals here. I personally, though, just before we jump into guessing that stuff, I do think there's going to be more wilderness stuff released here. Everyone keeps asking me, when wilderness, when wilderness? So we know the wilderness bosses are coming out January, right? Hopefully, that's what they said. I think there's going to be more. I think there's going to be a lot more. Maybe even a single boss coming out. Everyone's talking about the quest and the single boss. Probably also going to be revealed. But there, these hints they give us, though are um should you show the let's let's put the one mank linked if you can real quick oh was that the twitter link yeah oh this dude so here's yeah. one yeah here's one <laughs> of the um <laughs> here's one of the hints it's just a very incredibly long bridge that spans from um this is the sorry, oh you... wait this is like zaya isn't it yeah, yeah that's that's from the zaya Pisco to, to uh, the monkfish place where you you fish monkfish. Piscatorus and Piscarilius, dude. Did they do that on purpose? Those things rhyme. I never realized <laughs> I that. that Is that on purpose? Dude, how many hints do we have? So we got this man in the middle. We got the big bridge. We got a J mod in the the bottom left of his face. Mank pointed out off off stream here. Anything else I'm missing, Mank? Since you got some keen eyes. Uh, not that I can see now, no. But just a really long bridge, and and in the previous teaser there was a really long sword. So I, I have no idea what what they're teasing, but something long, like the roadmap, maybe. Yeah, yeah, maybe maybe it's like a pun on like it's gonna the be roadmap. a long time before we know what the fuck. <laughs> like this is how long it's gonna be until we know anything. Well, they're telling us in three days. Uh, well, on the tenth, I don't know when this so, video will come so out. This but... is like this is like a it's an announcement for like future future stuff, basically. We'll try to get this video out before the tenth. I think would be a good thing just to give people like some. Oh, let's see what we could like crowd think here for these reveals. So if you guys know or have an idea of what we may be getting, what does the bridge mean, bro? Let us know. Um, I'll, I'll go first on the bridge, yes. Yeah, so let's go around and give our best guesses here, dude. Maybe the bridge ties into something we already know. Like, maybe that's where the single boss will happen. Maybe it's an ocean boss, bro, and you gotta take a big, long-ass bridge to get to it? Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I think people, people are gonna love that. 
Tom, what do you what do you do you think is just a bridge? And they're just that's, they're just gonna add a bridge. I think I did. I think it's just a meme. I I I think this has nothing to do. Unless unless it's a play on like bridging the gap between something. Oh, which it could be, right? Dude, you think they're gonna bridge the gap between the two big locked land masses, dude? Because it is a little ridiculous that you. It's not really close that area of Zaire. That's why it's so dead. You have to take a boat there, not the new people don't know it. What if they are bridging that gap somehow? Yeah. Um, I feel like what if bridge? they could. It's a good idea, dude. Honestly, I wouldn't even mind a long bridge, too. I feel like people love it. Just fucking. I, I mean, it would be. Fishing it would, spots on it. Just fucking. It yeah, cool. dude. It would be really Big unique, bridge. actually, because when I first saw it, I just glanced, glanced at this. I didn't properly look, and I just instantly thought I was the Wizard's Tower. Because that's the only bridge I can think of. I was about like to bring that up, sea. dude. <laughs> so yeah, it I, reminds me exactly like that. Imagine if they did do that; that would be quite cool, actually. I don't know. I don't know if they'd have to like put something on there. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, or just make it just like one big ass bridge. I don't. I don't know. They could. Yeah, people wanted. fire making on it and shit. And... <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Trying to fire Man, do, you, do you know who's in the middle, by the way? Is that also a J-Mod? I, 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 I gotta I learn my J-Mods. I have no idea. Uh, I've never seen them. I'm sure it I is. I'm sure it is. I know the, bot, he's doing the this. bottom left, left is. What does that mean, bro? Bridging, Something girthy coming out? Bridge in the gap. Yeah, it, I think it's... All... Well, when you do this, it's like you're like, this is how big of a fish I caught. <laughs> I think Could it be a fishing update? With what they said. Like, we wanted to take players further than they've ever been before. So I'm guessing it's to do with that, but what that actually means, I have no idea. Yeah, I have no clue. What What do you guys think is going to be announced? I really think um, they're going to announce, like for me, I'll just stick with my wilderness stuff. You guys can, because I don't know exactly everything else, but I do think they're going to be talking about more of the game jam. Um, honestly, when I saw this bridge, I was thinking Bridge of Fate in the Wild, but it has n nowhere near the wilderness, and I hope the bridge is nowhere near that long <laughs> for mm. for the Fate of the Wild bridge. So maybe you know uh, the new PK Town, hopefully Rev Boss Multi, they'll cut into that. Um, just just something like that that they touched on Game Jam. They're bringing it back up. That's my assumption. Dude, I have no idea. I I think um, I, I mean you said they were talking about releasing a leagues, right? Like this is this is the trouble I get is I get really, Yo. really bad tunnel vision because at the moment I'm just playing fresh starts. So I'm not, I don't know the price of the ring. I, I don't, I'm not really been checking the updates. I know that in January we're getting the bosses and I'm, I'm looking forward to it because guess what? Fresh start worlds, there's a lot less people and I'm one of the Ooh. higher, higher people. So guess who's going to be absolutely camping those caves and hopefully getting some good shit. Be fun content as well. But yeah, I, I, I cool. don't know. I, I think... They would be silly not to release a leagues just because they did. Did they do one this year, or it was like really early this year? That was at the uh, very end yeah. of December last year, I think. So twenty twenty two, we didn't have one. I think it ran into this year, no? Yeah, and because then the wilderness boss came out, and I was like, "Sorry, boys, I gotta go revs. No more." <laughs> I remember that. Well, I mean, I but feel like it would make sense for them to do a leagues because people do top. want it, you know. And mm -hmm. I, I, we we spoke about this on the last podcast. There was a rumor that they were talking about potentially just re-releasing one of the, the leagues that they've done before. And um, we were just discussing how we didn't think it would be a very good idea. Kind of similar to Dead Man. I liked it. <laughs> yeah, I but I, like it. I, I think... No one else liked it. I, I think that, like, when you look at Dead Man mode, probably one of the biggest mistakes they made with that was just re-releasing the same thing too many times with very mm -hmm. minor changes and sometimes none at all. Um, and it would be a real shame to see something like Twisted Leagues go down that same path. It, it would it'd make me lose a bit of faith, to be honest, because it's like, come on, guys, like you can clearly see this didn't work before, but I don't think they're going to do that. I think it would be totally different. I, think, Tom, uh, I just got to say, has anyone ever told you that you're a genius? <laughs> Many times. Many times, dude. I'm going <laughs> to tell you again, bro. You, you might honestly be a genius, because the first two things you brought up about this bridge... Right, was one they're bridging the gap. I wouldn't even fucking thought of that shit. And then two, you're like, maybe it has something to do with leagues. And I'm thinking, they rework the first leagues, which is on Zaya. <laughs> they just have this long oh. ass bridge. <laughs> like maybe that's the thing. Maybe it's like a twist though on the new leagues. Like it bridges out mm -hmm. in a way, right? Because I, I didn't even 
think of that and you're just like randomly spouting this out and i'm like this man might be <laughs> onto something bro how is he doing this dude that that bridge would actually be so fun as well like think of it for like a pvp world challenge where it's like okay there's 10 people first person to get to the other side or the last person alive wins so it's like that would be fucking fun, wouldn't it? Imagine Is it bridge that. multi. <laughs> You're just like all freezing each other and bolting each other, and just trying to get to the other side of the bridge or something. And maybe there's like some like monsters on the side that like attacking you, fucking with tridents and shit. Who knows? Oh, they could have like little like uh, krakens or something, bro. Little krakens. They could have. I just want to know why that guy's face is in the corner, dude. So you said it was Mod West, right? I think, I think yeah, it was Mod West. His, and he's hanging out in the West area. Yeah, sounds like, like how far do they think of this? Or is he are is it a is it like they're just messing with me or does this mean something? Oh my um, I, I they, think I did see a tweet by the way for the next leagues saying it will probably be a rerun of a previous one. No. And I, I think it was Trailblazer, the second one. I I I, I, I saw that like uh, today or yesterday where they said well, I don't know who it was, I can't remember who it was that said it, but they said it would likely be a rerun. Oh man. Like I'm down. I know I know you're down. I, uh, <laughs> I'm over here excited as hell. They're gonna have relics on like Zaya with a bridge. I'm I'm in. I'm they, in. I feel you like they would have to change it though. Like if it was exactly the same. I mean like this is the thing, this is the thing. I, I doubt that people um would not play it because it's the same. But that's not the concern. The concern is having too much of a good thing and having the same thing too much. Like, that's the problem. I'm sure it would do well. I, I'm sure that Jagex would... But it, it's more a case of, like, you know, do you really want to go down that same path? Uh, and, like, if you look at, like, any other uh, popular and successful online game, whether you're looking at, like, League of Legends or Overwatch or something like that, like, whenever they do these uh, time-gated events, which are, like, you know, they're only running for a few weeks or a month... Like, they have so many of them that are in rotation that are constantly changing every few months. And, and I feel like they could definitely apply that, and they should apply that, I think, to, like, you know, Deadman Mode, Twisted Leagues, for Start Worlds if they do it again, and, and like, many other, you know, various uh, uh, time-gated modes that they could come out with. Because it doesn't... It then allows people to have something new every time instead of having to, like, you know do the same thing over and over again and to be honest with you we're probably the best gaming audience to have that content for because we play runescape but still like we all saw what happened at dead man mode but mm -hmm. yeah i don't i don't know maybe they like change up the relics a little bit honestly because the last time they had relics they were fun but there was obviously some that were way worse than others so maybe they they found like their perfect niche relics for certain areas and it's like a rerun but when you play it, it just feels way different. Like a remake of Pokemon, you know? Yeah. Which one was Trailblazers, by the way? Was that the Zaya only, or was which no. one was this? I, th I think it said Zaya between only? the first one and the second one in the tweet, but they'd lean towards the second one. Because the second okay. one was really good. And Unlimited dueling yeah. ring charges, Rexy. That's what I had. <laughs> <laughs> that was my... <laughs> I was thinking oh, I didn't I didn't prepare at all. I was thinking first eight hours. I need some teleports. This sounds genius. Oh, damn. Two days later, I'm like, I fucked up. <laughs> Dude, I fucked up so hard. I, I really need to like get into the mindset of wanting to do twisted leagues. Like I just there's just something about it that just doesn't like appeal to what me. What if there's a silk relic? Like double oh, silk? A full inventory of silk with one click. Oh my god, that would be fucking and -sell. sick. Dude, that would Yo. be sick. You'd have so many alts. I would. But, but like, I, get me in the mindset, man. Like, sell leagues to me. Because here's the thing, like, right. I, I don't... Like, the, the, the idea of just getting skills higher doesn't really do it for me. It would if I got to keep the account, but you don't. And it's bro, like, I, I, I just... You, I, need, I need some help with this. I'm gonna sell you on it right now, dude. Alright, close your eyes, bro. Day one. Leagues. Brand new relics. Everybody has a beautiful username. Level three. Bunch of bald bots walking around cutting trees. No economy, just gains. Solo mission on his fourth cup of G Fuel already ranked one. <laughs> one million above everyone, dude. But not in Silk. That's where you come in, bro. Episode <laughs> one, Silk Master. All right. <laughs> master of the threads. I'm dude. just saying, I love... I just I love the the start like the week you just see everyone grinding everyone's got their own strat 
these relics bring like new strats too. I it's just I'm a sucker for old games replayed in a different way. I am every game. RuneScape is just one of those things. Like I love the fresh economy, even though there's no economy in leagues, but like mm. you get to see people walking around like leather. Do you, you know, know? Do you know what or this iron. reminds me of? Do you remember um I can't remember which one it was. I played one of them. It was probably the one where you saw me pickpocket in silk, whichever one that was. There was all like <laughs> Solo Mission hosted like this multi war thing that we did in the fight pits. And Yo, didn't I beat your ass, dude? Were you guys in that? I, I yeah, was it was that. yeah. Mm-hmm. You, but who was your teammates? Who dude, your teammates? one sec. Well, I, I can't remember. Well, what happened is I turned up, and obviously I was probably playing like the least out of all of the content creators. So I was like a lowish level 100. And they were laughing at me, bro. They were like roasting me because I had a dragon skimmy. They were like, God, ah, look at this guy. He's only got a dragon skimmy. Not knowing that I literally bought it to like slash people's prayers. And the first person that we were against that we piled skimmed that prayer off, and he got one hit. <laughs> it just like dropped. Yeah, who'd you want it? So this was a um by the way, a solo mission hosted event in Tazar Fight Pit, I believe second leagues. We all had different relics in combat, and whoever won won I can't even remember. And we all had different teammates, dude. Tom, do you remember your teammate, by the way? I f- oh. It was a big group. Like, I can't, yeah, groups. it was a lot of people. I can't, I'm not I can't in, remember. I'm not invited to much, so I remember it like it was yesterday. Oh, was dude, this is really... Brand, bro. This is so, right, we this were, is so meaningful oh, for him. <laughs> dude, it was very... I was nice. Yeah, I was in a conversation with all the content creators. Me and a friend were hiding in a corner somewhere talking <laughs> shit. We got, I think, second place somehow because we were just hiding the whole time. It was... It was good. Man, I, I miss that stuff, bro. I... Oh. You know, I've been thinking recently about something Solo Mission said when he was on the podcast last. Last, he was like, "Everybody wants to do events, but nobody wants to host them." Mm-hmm. And it's so yeah. fucking true because it's just so much effort. Uh, and it's like, unless there's like a financial incentive, like it's like oh, I'm gonna get paid money to do this. It's kind of like, bro, it's just a lot, you know. And I was kind of, th- I've been thinking about it the last few days because I've always wanted to like host an event, but like just thinking of a way to do it where it would be chaos, but organized chaos. Like, I, I feel like I would, I would love to do like some sort of, um, and I don't know how long it would be or anything like that, but like PVP challenges. Like I've got, I've, like I've got some sick ideas for things that I think would be really interesting. Like, so, so I'll just give you one real quick. And this is something I've like spoke about previously, so it might ring some bells. So one of the challenges would be uh, effectively you'd log into your account. Um, it wouldn't be your account. It'd be an account that we've placed somewhere. And basically you have to react to what happens when you log in. So as soon as you log in, uh, all one, two, three, four, five of the Barry brothers, right, are just there. And they instantly fucking run at you and just smack mm-hmm. you. But these are players, like full arms, full DH, full rounds, uh-huh. guffins. You know, they're just all there. So you log in and it's like you just react to like what happens and it's like who survives. But the catch is it's like if you if you stop panicking, it's like, well, firstly, you can just kill them. You're equipped with everything you need to kill them, uh, but it's in multi. So it's like you're gonna have to freeze them, pick them off one at a time, and also they don't have food. So like just just like a silly little thought like that, but yeah, I, I don't know. I think it's just like it would it would be like what level and extent do you take an event to? It's like do you take it to the extent of like soups? Like bro, the man's spending like probably a hundred hours editing an episode. Like they yeah. are insane. Or do you do something like a live a live event, like the battles uh uh EV skate battle royale? It's like it's like, wh- which path do you take? It's like, on one hand, you've got one which takes like hundreds of hours in the back versus one that can go really wrong in the present, but may not require as much like editing time to do. So it's like, I don't know. I think I'd probably I'd probably do like the, the soup one, but probably not to like the, uh, I don't even know what it's called. He's making like, is it, it's like one of those like, he's making like a show, uh, a sitcom. Is that what they call it? I don't think it's a sitcom, but just a show, yeah. Like it's, it's, it's just a series of. It's like, like a drama um, or something. I, I don't even. I don't really watch TV. You know so how I always bring shows. up like Minecraft and like these these communities that build their own everything. Mm-hmm. That's kind of like soup. Probably got that really like it's an idea 
that was kind of existed on other games and not in the way he did it. Like he's doing it in like a crazy, he's got blender animations. He's got the top people on, they got competitions money, but these things happen in a way where it's like, they got challenge maps on Minecraft. They have these content creators come in and it's not a ton of editing, but there is some, and they do really well. And it's really nice to see RuneScape is kind of adopting that naturally full community driven. Uh, and it's our own idea. And not only that, but they're doing it to the best of their ability too. So Yeah, bro. Do you know, I saw a tweet uh, a few weeks ago. I, I think it was Linkara. And they basically like were requesting from Jagex. They were just like, can we just get like our own private worlds already? Like where we can customize our own RuneScape and make our own challenges. And like, I mean, I don't see a problem with that. I mean, maybe there is like a knock on effect to doing something like that, but you know, it would be great for content creators. And like, you could literally get one that's like anybody can join. It's an official RuneScape server, but it's like, you know, this is Max PK universe and you log in and it's like you've constructed it however you want. Like, that would be cool, wouldn't it? I, I like what you're saying, Mint. I think there's potential there. Dude, I think so too. Honestly, how I see RuneScape and how we evolved from just like PK videos back in the day, which were all community driven. They were the best on YouTube and they all had copyrighted music, right? That was our, that was our classic birth moment to now where we have these amazing progress videos, guides for everything that you would want and wouldn't want, right? It's just, you see the community building. It's its own ecosystem, bro. It's so cool. I don't know where I was starting with this. I'm just happy I'm in it. That's all I'm saying, bro. It's nice to see RuneScape forming even more. It's not dying off. A lot of games, they die off after this creativity. They're just they're just going, bro. And they're Mate, running with it. Th that's the thing. Like, dude, that's, do you know what? That's a really good segment to speak about, actually, because we've got Manked here. Like, Manked has just dedicated the last year, year and a half, two years to learning coding like a computer language to be able to work at Jagex. That's his dream. And, and mm -hmm. like, there has to be longevity. Like, you must see longevity in RuneScape as a game to, like, put it all on the line and, you know, take this career path, right? And, and it's like, isn't that an interesting thing how, although, like, we're doing separate things because, like, we're doing content creation, you're going to be actually working on the game but it's kind of like the vision is kind of the same because it's like we have a vested interest here where it's like we want the game to succeed because it like benefits us like even though we're doing different things and also the fact we love the game. But like what 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 do you think about the future of RuneScape Manx? Do you think it's prosperous? Um, yeah, I mean I, I wouldn't yeah spend all this time obviously the last year of my life trying to work there if I didn't think it had so much potential. Um the game Old School's been out for just under 10 years, I want to say. Um, obviously, RuneScape's been around for a lot longer. But Old School's been around for 10 years. Let's just say it's been around for 10 years. In that time, for pre-OC, pre-OC was only like, let's be honest, like seven, eight years, like proper pre-OC. So we've already surpassed how long that time period of pre-OC was. And I just think, like, for PvP especially, I, obviously I love PvP and I'm very biased to PvP, but there's been very few updates for PvP, and there's still a player base for it. And I think if it's done, if updates are done correctly, then that can still grow. And, like, content creators like yourself and just players in general can have an amazing time in the wilderness and PvP worlds if they're given the opportunity to. So... Yeah, I, I see there's so much potential with the game. And yeah, I've played it for so long. It's just part of me, I think, at this point. Like, it's yeah. been 17, 18 years at this point. You know, I just, I want to see the game doing well. Um, Bro, we're, and, we're in the exact same yeah. boat with that. Like, 100%. Yeah. It, it's the same for me. It's like, you, you, I can't see a world where I'm alive and I'm not playing RuneScape, even if it's just part-time and it's like... You know, I'm an old man and I'm playing on the weekend, mm -hmm. which is something I really fucking hope is true. Like, I hope that RuneScape... Th this is the thing. I think that RuneScape, people are so passionate about the game. It's like, even in, like, 50 years, like, realistically, like, the chances of RuneScape still being alive and around in 50 years is kind of slim, right? And, I, you know, it's like, it's just such a long time. It's, it's territory that we were just not familiar with for video games. But, like, I would mm -hmm. like to think that there would be people like us that love the game so much that we we kind of like 
you know the game dies they shut down but it's like hey we're, we got private servers like we're gaming like we're still playing just in a different way i i can't really see a future where i don't play and at this point as well it's like i've invested so much of my life into this game you know like it's just yeah. th there's no, there's no i can't see a future without me playing this game at some point i really can it feels surreal talking about RuneScape surviving for 50 years or like any game. Like when we grew up, we had like Game Boys and then we found the internet and then all of a sudden MMOs came out. We had Mudscape, right? We weren't thinking about, yo, it's going to be around in 10 years. We were just dopamine, dopamine, dopamine. Now we have this expanding technology. We got VR. We got all the tournaments that are bringing in so many people, almost comparable to sports, right? Mainstream sports, probably going to out surpass that soon. Right, sooner than later. In some for sure, yeah. Yeah. So I'm, in my mind, I like do mental exercise. What game that's out right now may actually last hundreds of years, right? Because that's never. There's no way it could have been done before. Like, is it Pokemon? Is it RuneScape? Are we? Do we see games out right now that are going to be around forever, or is that to come? Right, and I, I don't know. For RuneScape, I don't know. A hundred years, hopefully fifty years. But honestly, as long as the community continues to expand and cre keeps up this creativity, and I couldn't see why not. I really yeah. couldn't. I think, like, as a, like, you know, the gaming genre, it, in my eyes, like, what you just said kind of, like, reminds me of my childhood in a way where it's, like, started off on, well, for me personally, I started out on the Sega Mega Drive, which was, like, a super old, oh. super old school console. Right. How'd the cartridges look? I don't even know what that is. What do they look uh, like? I'll have to see if I've got I'm pretty sure I've got it at my friend's house. I can actually like grab it. A some million dollars now, dude. You better no, grab they're, that. They're not they're not worth they're not worth that much. So there might be a few that are worth a bit. But yeah, I started with the Sega Mega Drive and then I kind of progressed like PlayStation One. I had a Dreamcast at one point. And like it just went like PS2, Xbox Three Sixty. Oh, uh not I didn't have a GameCube, I had a Dreamcast. Man, you know did you have a GameCube? No, I didn't. I, I was, what the fuck I was... are these UK people gaming, bro? Where's the GameCube? <laughs> Smash was... Bros, Mario yeah. Kart? Oh, it, ex it existed. No. Animal it was... Crossing, dude? Dude, it, it existed. It was just uh... like mad expensive, bro. Like, yeah. for, for me, it's like we got... Like, when my friends were getting the PlayStation 2s for Christmas, we were getting the PlayStation 1. You know what I mean? Oh, like, that's yeah. that's kind of like how it was for me. Um, but mm -hmm. yeah, I remember like Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advanced, and it's kind of like there was like an evolution of discovering games as I grew up that I started off so fucking addicted, bro. Like I was glued to the Sega Mega Drive, I was glued to the PlayStation, I was glued to my Game Boy. I remember on my birthday I was given a Game Boy, and uh, my I feel do you know what this is like one of those this is probably one of the only things in my life that I actually regret. I feel so bad about this to this day. So my mum bought me a Game Boy for my birthday. I was like a little kid. And she'd also planned for us to go quad biking for my birthday. And I had my Game Boy and I was like, I don't want to go quad biking. Like, I'm good. Like, and we didn't go. I literally just stayed on my Game Boy all day. And I remember my mum was like super pissed off. I'll have to Yo. remind her of that story when I speak to her next. But it's the innocence of kids, though, dude. We don't understand that yeah. us not wanting to do something is fucking up their whole plans, bro. <laughs> I literally I fucked the whole day up. Um, but but then eventually we got a computer, and the thing is with a computer, it's like there was such a massive mm -hmm. barrier to entry to play RuneScape because when RuneScape was around at the beginning, it's like you need a computer. It's like bro people don't have computers we were we were really lucky because my mum had like the foresight to be like okay computers are going to be big in the future like we're we're talking like like in the late 90s early 2000s right mm -hmm. she's like computers are going to be big in the future they're taking them to schools now they're going to have to learn them I want my kids to have a head start. Now, admittedly, we just played fucking games on them. There was no educational purposes there whatsoever. Um, but it was like, there was that barrier to entry. And it's like, fuck, my brother introduced me to, to RuneScape back in like the early 2000s. And it was like, this is the ultimate game. It's like, it's combined all of the stuff that I used to love on PlayStation, Dreamcast, Sega Mega Drive, Game Boy. But now it's with people. I remember playing like my Game Boy and thinking this game would be amazing, but imagine if I could play with other people because at the time, the only way you could engage with other people, you had to get like this uh, 
it, it was like some weird like wire thing from one Game Boy to another, and you could like fight each other, or or like you could trade Pokemon. Dude, that was so fun. By the way, I remember if you yeah. traded the Pokemon and you like saved it at the time that you like ripped the cable out or like turned off the game, you'd be able to duplicate the Pokemon. So you'd have like yeah. two of the same one and shit like that. But I would yeah. do that solo, dude. <laughs> so, sorry for the really long mon monologue, but like RuneScape was like the peak in, in my eyes. Like RuneScape MMORPGs was a combination of all of the great stuff that came before it combined into one along with the element of being able to play with other people. Like, that blew my mind as a kid that there were actually people. And even to this day, if I show somebody who doesn't play RuneScape RuneScape, I'm like, those white dots are people. Like, they're actual people that are behind their computer, or, you know, they're on their phone or whatever. It's like, they are physical people. Except from the bots, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> Damn, dude, well, I'm getting way too excited over here. But, sorry. My, my <laughs> what well, made... You go oh, for sorry, it. you got. I was just gonna say, you, you go know, back it. back to Mate real quick, man. Like you just became a J mod, bro. Let's hear some of your first gaming experiences before we jump back into, I guess, the other sneak peeks of the Winter Summit. Um. Well, my quick history of gaming is PS One, PS Two, Xbox Three Sixty, uh, and throughout all of that, I played single player games on PS One, PS Two because the internet wasn't really around. And then Xbox 360 started playing Call of Duty. And ever since then, I played Call of Duty and RuneScape together. So I'd basically just mm. either play one or the other when I got home from school. And I did that for, yeah, until now, pretty much. Um, <laughs> just wait, and repeat. <laughs> Manx, did you play uh, the original PvP? What, what do you mean? Like, the, sorry, the original PvP system that they had. You know, the uh, PV, like EP PvP. Like bounty hunter creators, and they have PvP oh, yeah. worlds. You played the yeah, original yeah, yeah. where you had the EP system. Yeah, bro. I feel like you and I are kind of alike with this because I'll tell you something. At that point in time, do you remember you used to have to risk seventy five thousand coins or more to increase yeah. your EP by twenty five percent? There were like yeah. hot zones. Hot zones were like contested places. It go up faster, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, do you remember when you used to fire strike? your friend in like full rune and you take no damage but you'd be there for two hours and that would get you 100 percent ep yeah we me and my mate used to do that all day every day like we were mm -hmm. fucking degenerates and the entire time we'd be splashing on each other and then we'd be we'd be like here with like the fucking xbox and we'd just be playing call of duty just like <laughs> rinsing on nice. and we'd be splashed at the same time getting ep and then every two hours we'd be like okay we better kill each other let's do <laughs> And yeah. we just do that all fucking day. Like, 12 hours plus a day. All day. Those were the days, dude. Uh, dude, I, I'm i the opposite. I hated those days. Because I Did would... You? When, I, when I went on RuneScape, I just wanted to PK. I didn't want to... I didn't want to sit around or anything. So I'd go kill people. And at that point, I was alright at PKing. So I was killing people for, like, 4 DH. And I'd get, like, a rune plate body. And I'd be so annoyed. <laughs> I'd be like, what oh. is this? I just, I just want their actual loot. So when they actually changed it... I think every day I PK like a pair of claws or something and I upload it to my YouTube. And yeah, I did that for like a week or something. Or, or it was like a whip PK every day or something. And I was so happy that the old loot system was back. Yeah. Because um, yeah, it, it was so frustrating PKing people for so much and not getting oh, anything for it. Dude, I remember Wasn't... like, yeah, I remember killing people for Max Mage and getting like fucking Armadal Totem. It's yeah. like, bro, like, not even, like, where the fucking Infinity Boots? Like, where, where is the shit? But, but what I will say is, like, it was, that's an enjoyable time for me when we were doing that, and we were just splash on each other playing Xbox all day. But, at the end of the day, it was also, like, a massive, like, fuck you to Jagex, because it was, like, we're abusing the system you've put in place, which has removed the fun from what we enjoy, which was PKing and getting full loot. So, it was, yeah. it was, it was kind of, like, a little bit of, like, rebellion, I guess. And they removed it's funny, it. Yeah, it's funny how history repeats too, because the reason they took away free trade and made all these weird, horrendous changes was the bots. And the reason now that Bounty Hunter was removed, which fucked PvP, was the bots. So <laughs> you got these bot waves. They're just constantly draining the PvP and RuneScape over the years too. Yeah. I think that's why PvP is so hard to make content for, because it, for PvP, you want content to be um available to all players to play but if you do that then bots can do it so then you think okay well to counter bots we'll add in a system so you have to risk x amount um so then the bots are discouraged or you add risk uh, just make it riskier 
But then the second you do that, you discourage all the lower tier players to do it. And then you only have the higher tier players and it kind of just fizzles out on itself. So it is so I can understand why Jagex have struggled to make PvP content in the past because it's so difficult to balance due to the bots. Um, but yeah, that, that's going to be something in the future that's going to be quite difficult, I think, to uh, manage. And, I hope and, they uh, use yeah. the tools at their disposal, like the um, like the, in Dead Man mode. You have like you can't log out, you can't teleport if you're in combat, or if you're in this area, you can't do that, right? Well, I don't I don't see how a bot could survive these tactics. You know, maybe uh, if they do add a deeper part of the wild where combat yeah. doesn't matter, it, it could be like you can't yeah. log out or that's you can't it, teleport, bro. you have to escape. It, it, it's how often the bot? combat level. Like that's that's yeah. what it is. This combat level, like when you look at like Bounty Hunter in recent years, which got abused. It was all because of the the combat level, because the bots were like like this weird obscure level where mm. they're like level thirty somethings where they had high enough HP not to get like one shot. And there was also like nobody else in the wieldy that was that level, and then they'd have like ten or twenty accounts and they'd kill each other. But um yeah. do you know, Manked, speaking of Bounty Hunter, so you obviously played around the time of like Bounty Hunter Crater, right? So this is this is like my opinion on it. And, and like I, I don't hear people talking about this fucking ever. I don't know if you, people even played back then. It's amazing how many people started playing the game in the last like four years, and they have no idea. But like the original concept of Bounty Hunter Craters, I don't think it was a bad one. I think that there is a massive stigma attached to it where it was shit, and the reason why it was shit, <clears throat> being somebody who lived through that time. I'm like a fucking dude. I'm like a World War II survivor over here. <laughs> yeah, but like, you're a veteran. I'm a veteran, dude. But like, this is how I look at it now. At the time, I fucking hated it. I was like everybody else. But I've reflected on it and I've looked back at it and it's like, okay, so I think the main reason that people disliked it was because they took the freedom of PKing in the entire wilderness. You PK anywhere. You know what I mean? And then they forced you in a tiny little enclosure. To begin with, it was all multi. I don't know if people remember that, but the first version of Bounty Hunter Crater was completely multi. So any yeah. kind of like single PKing in our rims, anything like that, out the window. So and it took like a few weeks or maybe even a month or a few months for that to change. And then they made it singles in the way that it was uh in the end. But the actual like foundations of Bounty Hunter Crater, I think were good. Because it, it was more of a bounty hunter system than we've ever had. Because it, it, I love the way that it actually worked. Because it was like, okay, so if you kill your target, it's fair game. You can take their stuff. You can peace out. But if you kill somebody who's not your target, not only is there the penalty of not being able to protect your plus one, which is a massive, massive issue, but on top of that, you're not allowed to leave the cave if you loot anything. So you have to tank at least, it was 180 seconds, I believe, for every yeah. time you pick something up off the floor. So that's like three minutes you'd have to tank, and you could have up to like four or five people on you. So yeah. I have never really been a fan of how it was all in one location. However, I do like the foundations of it. I like the way that it worked. I like the penalties to it. I like the way that you were punished and rewarded. And it actually felt 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 like you were actually hunting somebody. It really felt like you were hunting someone. It felt like a game. Um, I've always had this like kind of thought where it's like, if they were to reintroduce Bounty Hunter into the game, I would love for them to reapply those original foundations to bounty hunter so you could just take open world bounty hunter you've got the entire wilderness you're in a bounty hunter world if you kill somebody who's not your target you can't leave for three minutes maybe even like you become a target like people can see that you you've done like the bad thing and people can get on you and stuff like that um because yeah i i think that the, the longer time's gone on it's become less of like a reward and risk thing and just more of like a reward thing it's yeah. like, what is the downside of killing somebody who's not your target? Like, there is no punishment for this. And and it kind of also leads to the issue of, of these accounts just being able to get away with it. And they're just bought in, like, 20-odd accounts that are killing each other. It's, I yeah, don't know. And that's why I took it out from the um, emblem boosting, right? But I'm hearing the rumor. I, I think it's a rumor. I don't know. I don't know. But I heard that Bounty Hunter may be making a revival. Have you guys heard about that at all? No, 
I, yeah. I, I've seen them talking about they want to bring it back, but I've not seen anything about they actually are bringing it back. One of my viewers is like, yeah, Yizu was saying something in a and a but honestly, it was second oh, bro. info from my chat. So. Yeah, dude, don't <laughs> listen to the last, yeah. the last time we spoke about your chat, it was about some guy that was telling you a guff in the spirit and fresh start worlds was worth like four mil, and he didn't even play. <laughs> dude, yeah, bro. He was close. It was like, you at the same time like what are you doing <laughs> what are you doing um speaking about like winter summit i maybe we will hear about bounty hunter i don't know like is there any like what other sneak peeks do we have um to go off of for the winter that summit? Would, that Was would that... be that would be amazing bro mm -hmm. imagine if they actually did announce oh my god that would be so good if they announced bounty hunter for the winter summit that would actually be so hype is yeah. there any other think about reveals? That. Let me check the RuneScape Twitter real quick. I'll just scroll through. Um... I'll just, can I talk about Bounty Hunter Creators quick? Yeah, yeah, go yeah, for it. For sure. Just, yeah, um, I think it's kind of like a good system having everyone located in like one specific area because then it's so much easier to counter bots. That's a good if, point. If, if, you, if you're locked into a crater and you kill, let's say... Um, Maybe you give people a, like a minute penalty if you kill your target and then a three minute penalty if you kill a normal person. Uh, that's not your target. And then that kind of counters boosting because let's be honest, if the risk is there where a, a bot or someone who's not like, not I don't want to say not very good, but if they're just doing it to boost and they have no knowledge about PvP and they're not trying to get into PvP or anything like that, they'll probably be discouraged if it's that risky. So yeah. I think it, it could be a pretty good countermeasure to boosting and, and all of that. Um, and also, I just had a memory of going into the Bounty Hunter Crater, killing someone who wasn't my target, leaving before I looted it, and then you'd run to the bank, you'd get like a tank set up, you'd bring some yeah. crews, you'd go mm -hmm. back in, and then you'd forget which wall yeah. you killed the person at, yeah. and you couldn't find uh, your loot, and it was so funny, dude. Those were the, dude, those were the best fucking... Bro, I'm going to tell you this fucked up story. That was like it this was my first ever encounter with losing okay like my first like deep loss and it really fucked bro it was this was hard to get past so it's when bounty hunter creators first come out and like pretty much 99 percent of the player base you don't fucking read the website the blog post is like pages long it's like i don't need to know all of this shit so i go in uh, this was literally like that week I managed to afford my very first gold sword. I bought a Bandos gold sword. It was 40 nice. mil. This was, this was back Bounty Hunter creators like 2000 and whatever. So I go in, I teleport to my target, and I, I end up bang on in the middle of the Bounty Hunter oh. creators. And um, this was at the point when it was singles, right? And my target's there somewhere, and there's this dude that's attacking me, and like he's got an Aram's top on. And he's got like a mystic bottom and he's, he's he's like in pretty good gear. And at this point, I'm like, I'm a bit of a noob. And I'm like, okay, shit, I've never killed somebody for our rims. Like, this guy's attacking me. He's not got very much health. He was like poisoned. He was like, like you know what I mean? They were setting me up. And um, nah. I fucking turn to him and just bang him straight with a BGS spec. Kill this kid. And bear in mind, while this is happening, there's about 20 to 30 players in our rims that are all following me. <laughs> oh, no. Uh -huh. As, and I, don't, I don't understand what the mechanics of Bounty Hunter are, but I know that if I kill somebody, it's usually a good thing. So I kill this guy, and then all of a sudden, they all pile me, right? Or the people that can attack me attack me. And they kill me, and I spawn outside, and I'm like, where's my fucking gold sword? I'm like, do I need to go and collect this from, like, an NPC? Like, what's going on here? Like, I, have I missed something in the update? turns out I, I basically set myself up and I, I killed somebody who wasn't my target and I didn't protect item because it knocks your protect item off and then they, they killed yeah. me like that. That's what they used to do. So, but here, yeah. here's the thing. My bank was solely in that gold sword. I think I had like a mil left afterwards but like, I'm not gonna lie. I remember okay. at the time, there was, there was like a moment of disbelief where I was just like there's no way I've just there's no way I've just I've just done this. And then I'm like, oh well, better go and make that money back. And just like walked mm. back into the game, just yeah. like where am I gonna find my fucking god sword? And I think it probably took me like a month before I got it back, but Damn, RuneScape mechanics words. back then were brutal, bro. They couldn't yeah. even try to do something like that now. The Reddit would be going crazy. The thing is, I think it was probably a case of, like, I was a young kid as well. So, like, I wasn't reading the text. And, like, I know yeah. for sure before you go into the Bounty Hunter creator, it would have explained 
but it was probably such like a massive amount of information to like be absorbed it's just like just let me in like what have they done to the game mm. let's let's see what what's going on I, dude i remember the way that it used to work as well is you would fight someone for like a couple of minutes and then they'd stay in there and then you'd fight someone else later on and then you'd, you'd be fighting your target right yeah I so remember if, you, this. if you kill your target you don't get a penalty however what they would do is just before you kill your target they would kill the other person you were fighting yep. as you kill your target. So you'd actually get a penalty and then you'd be locked in and you yep. couldn't protect item. And you and pick up the your stuff. The yeah. 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 Oh dude, the Bounty Hunter craters were magnificent. I, I've got I've got good memories and bad memories, but yeah, over, overall I think I can look back at that as a decent time. I I preferred Bounty Hunter craters to PvP worlds. I think PvP yeah. worlds were dog shit, to be honest with you. I don't know oh, if you um, remember. I don't know if you remember this. Do you remember they banned Spark Mac? Like this, this was the making of Spark Mac. I, I lived through this shit. Spark Mac was like it was relatively big. He probably had like 10k subs, or you know, he, he had a few thousand subscribers. He was pretty big at the time, but he wasn't like Chris Archie. Chris Archie was like the fucking dude. Like mm -hmm. everybody knew Chris Archie. Everyone knew Nightmare RH. Spark Mac got banned for abusing uh the ep system there was a bug in the original pvp world um i can't remember exactly how it worked but it basically meant that you could kill people and you would basically guarantee to get like furies dragon four helms dra dragon fire shields and bearing in mind back in those days they were worth a lot of money his account got banned like just perma banned so he had to make a new account and in in the process of like building his new account, that was the making of him. Because I remember he was like, fuck, he was shit talking Jagex like back in those days. And the thing is, like, everybody was kind of like in agreement with him because they were just like, yeah, what have they done to our wilderness? And now they've banned us because, you know, we've abused this this bug or whatever. But that's a, that's an interesting memory. He, he blew God, up bro. like in a we month. We need to have him on and then go through his whole. Um timeline bro honestly i feel like they'd be really interesting to see his timeline of Dude, uh, how he started he used to make some really good bounty hunter creator videos like i was a big mm. fan of him back then because his videos were insane and he, I, 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 yeah. yeah i was just gonna I say he always yeah. had like really high quality i think that was yeah. the thing for spark mac like his quality was always it was like a cut above everybody else like it was just it was very good yeah he, he did msb to claw videos and they were just so fun to watch because claws were mm -hmm. relatively new at the time and um I, i've written down four little stories if you want to if you want to hear my little stories from the past let's go um so when bounty hunter creators came out and they were all multi i made the biggest clan for that multi cave so did you? The, the, yeah the second it came out i got everyone to join my friends chat or cc whatever it was back then or, or we all wore the same team cape and we we controlled the whole crater for like two three hours and then i had to go for dinner went for dinner came back everyone was gone and I was like, ah, okay, well, well, that that's gone. Um, earlier you were talking about your your first death, right? Mm. And I remember my first death as well. I was multi peaking at Varrock, and I had an MSB in like green dehyde vams, and I died to like a team. And then I started crying, and my dad was <laughs> like, "What's wrong?" And I was like, "People just killed me." And he was like. What, who stole from you and he was like really like <laughs> angry and like what 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 do we need to do and i was just like i was so sad and then the next day i made i made my all my gear back like really fast and i said to him i was like don't worry about it i i didn't lose anything let's go at the time that was my yeah. first ever death i thought oh my god i've just lost everything i've i've, I've ever worked for but mm. man, it was fine dude I, what, oh what, my what god. were you doing in the wild bro what were you i was pking dude you I, were with everything never, you owe. I never, I never died. Yeah, yeah, because I was just peeking with MSB and like green vans. Because so my first ever account, I got it to level fifty or something after like two months of playing or, or level sixty. And then my friend hacked me, so I quit that. And ever since he hacked me, I became a PK. I walked up to Varrock Buildy, I PK'd there for like a year or two, and I literally go to the church, look for people to PK with, and then go like double DDS people or, you know, just PK in that area. And it was so much fun. Oh man. And then I also yeah. remember one last story. Bounty Hunter Creators, I got hacked, I lost everything, and I remembered my old like tank account that I stopped playing, and I had full void on it. I out the void for money. 
<laughs> it was like six i think it, i think it was like 67k or something but i out my full void because i was like i don't play this account anymore i don't need my full void i oh, out it bro. and i regretted it so much because i played that account like a couple of months later and, bro uh, you, you you've just like unlocked a memory of mine from bounty hunter craters right so back in bounty hunter craters there was like a, a progression to to get into a good team this was when like the good teams were the dudes in Arims, Max Mage in the center of the crater, and there'd be a big team of them, there'd be run-ins with other clans, but like you couldn't join those teams. Like you had to get experience, and you usually got that experience in the form of joining a worse team and then making your way up the ranks effectively and getting to know people. It was just networking, that's what it was. So I remember I was in uh one of the clans, it was called Team High Quality, THQ. It's just spam like <laughs> hashtag THQ. And um, it was a bad team. Like, there were a few people up there that were, like, you know, they were trying to get good and stuff like that. It was, like, anybody could join. Like, there wasn't a requirement. You just joined the clan chat, and then you got a Ventrilo link, and then you went in the Ventrilo, and that was basically it. So I remember we were trying to, like, up the team. It was, like, we were actively trying to make it a better team and get better people in there. And a big part of that was that we didn't have many people that would use Arims, and Arims is obviously, like, back then it was, like, an intimidation thing. It's also mm. slightly better than Mystics. I remember my first time so vividly of stepping into Bounty Hunter Craters and four Arims because I got inside and I was fucking shaking. Like, I was, <laughs> I was like, trembling. I was trembling, dude. I couldn't move. And I was like, man, I could hear them on Ventrilo. They're like, yo, boys, we need you to come to the center. Come, come, come. Everybody come, come, come. Because like, there was a team that was getting ready to hit them. And I was just stood there and I was like, fuck, I'm like shake. I'm like scared out of my fucking mind right now. I can't do it. And then all of a sudden, I get fucking deboed by a voider and get one shot. Dude. Was it Make Up Mage? I don't know who it was. Oh, that's, I was watching Make Up Mage's fucking videos on Bounty Crater, dude. No, I didn't I, know it was you, I bro. Doubt, I doubt. I doubt. Maybe the only dude was Mag's Darkbow. He was the one dude Mag's Darkbow and people in those caves. He just uploaded, so, bro. Th oh. This is the best fucking thing. Is that I literally went there from being so fucking nervous to lose my shit to I literally got one shot, like just straight up one shot. And there might have been somebody else that like they piled me at the same time. I think it could have been like my target and avoider that both piled me. I died for Max. Like I died for our room. I mean, it was it was basics, but it was like you know it was a lot of money back then. And as soon as I died, I remember I was outside the cave and I was just like, I was like, okay, I'm over it. And I just got my next set of arrows and went straight in. Wasn't scared anymore. It was like losing that first set set me up for success because then I no longer gave a shit. I was like, I've lost it. I know how it feels to lose. Now I can just go in and fuck shit up. And that's exactly what I did. It was, it was like, there was like a wave of like relief. It was like, I've lost my first big set. I'm like, I can just use it now, and I don't need to worry about it. No, I feel that. Yeah, after I lost my first hit Ancestral, no, I was still shaking, honestly. I was not. I was I was thinking about this. I, I was thinking about this the other day, because everyone, like, the, the amount of money that people PK nowadays with, like, Torvan, Zarek, Crossbows is fucking insane. But, like, back in the day... My biggest PK was at Mage Bank. To this day, my biggest PK was back in Mage Bank in probably around about 2010, something like that, where I found a dude with a pack yak and full wire rims outside of Mage Bank. I barrage him twice. He's AFK. So I just claw him out, right? Mm. He's literally just AFK. And he had. <laughs> he had an Arcane Spirit Shield that he didn't protect. Oh my God. He had a Dragon Fire Shield that he didn't protect. Dragon Claws, full Bandos, like, we're talking, like, the biggest PK you could get back then. Like, it was, like, you'd kill kids like that, but you wouldn't get the Arcane. The Arcane was, like, the fucking, like, oh my god. Um, so yeah, I kill him, and I think that as I killed him, he must have, like, been on TeamSpeak or something and be like, oh my god, fuck, I just got clawed out. And then his his boy like runs through and like tries to TB me, but at that point I've already fucking yacked all of his shit back to the bank. <laughs> like the arcane, the bandos boys, that's gone. Like you don't need to worry about that. But yeah, that was I think that's my my biggest PK. It was probably around about like for, probably only about two hundred mil actually, two to three hundred yeah. mil. But back then that was that's like, huge. dude, that was massive. Like a full set of bandos PK was fucking huge. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like it's mm -hmm. different times. But yeah, yeah, I didn't have those stories, bro. I, 
<laughs> I could get a couple dark bows on my OB Mauler. Just put on auto retaliate. It was the the time that um the wilderness came back with free loot, and they I think the worlds had a world where it was always protect item. So people were not in custom to protecting item anymore. So I just yeah. leave my little OB Mauler there. Someone would dark bow rush me. They were all excited. I wouldn't even eat. I would just let Jesus take the wheel. Half the time I got a dark bow. <laughs> Pretty good. I, I got hacked. Oh, uh, dude! I think I got hacked more than you did, mate. Every, every time we talk about hacks on this podcast, no one's been hacked more than me, bro. You, you might be a contender. I don't mm. know. Yeah, I've been hacked a few times, but it's just me being stupid and letting people on my accounts. Mm. And then yeah. that honestly, that's why I, I don't think I've really let anyone on my account for like the last ten years since Ultimate yep. came out. I was like, no one's on my accounts. No, same. same, bro. Exact same, same man. I, I had the Ooh. exact same shit. Like you make friends with people when you're young, and you're like. This person's my boy. I remember I had the, I had like a very similar thing where um I was really good friends with this guy for years, literally for years. He was like I considered him my best friend online, you know, like like you know what I mean when I say that. And then like we shared everything. I'd been on his account, he'd been on my account. One day I come home and all my stuff's gone, and I'm just like, "Have you been on my account, dude?" And he was like, "He was like, no." And then a few days pass. I'm like, "Bro, you're the only person that had access." And he's like, oh, yeah, I took your stuff. And I was like, why? He said he was bored. What? He me know. Bro, the, he Psycho. messaged. He messaged. Jesus. Yeah, I know. Fucked up, man. He messaged me a few years ago when I started, like, doing content creation full time and was like, hey, man. And, like, he was like, I'm really sorry for what happened back in the day and all of this. And did, I just, you, did you forgive him or were you like, suck a fat one? Dude, and like, click. I listen, I'm not like the kind of person to hold like grudges. Like I don't care, but I'm These also I'm also not the kind of person who would be like fine with then rekindling with somebody who's done me wrong. If that makes sense, mm -hmm. like I don't care about it. Like it's funny, I, I laugh about it, but I'd never like be his friend because that trust is gone. Yeah, so no, it's just sure. there's no trust there. Do you know what I mean? And like I can mm -hmm. forgive and forget, but well, I can forgive, but I don't forget. That's probably the best Damn. way to put it. Nothing like a woman scorn. What what is this, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> this well, I was gonna ask Mank about this because this is um what was what was but well, this is what was said. Said? God, this is what was introduced, the, presented the at the game jam. Yes. This is the ah, uh the I thought it looked like it. And uh, I was just wondering if Mank, if you've taken a look at this. This is the wilderness extension 2.0. I'll link it in the Discord if you want to get a, a closer look at it. Mm -hmm. uh, and it looks, looks like a ton of new bosses and yeah. resources. It looks like it was uh, posted by oh, rip, wrong one. It looks like it was posted by Mod Safan, who I believe is uh, one of the newer. Well, she's not new anymore, but she's one of the artists at Jagex that has been doing some. You definitely feel she has work. a passion for this game too. Yeah, she's, look she's at above and beyond. look at this dude. That's insane. Tree rot. Yeah, the skull, bro. Tree rot looks like an extension of the uh, the ants, like maybe the end yeah. boss or something like that. This looks really cool. Have Have you seen this? So, mate? Um, I've not properly looked at it. No, no, I, I've not seen this one either. I've not taken a proper proper look at it. To give the viewers the rundown, that bridge right there in the middle of the lava, expanding off of a uh, mage bank, kind of, is called the Bridge of Fate. Anything past that point, if this comes in the game, will be. Uh, not not combat restricted so you can attack any combats past that point um, yeah. it, it kind of feels like if they're going to be adding a lot of good money makers to this game it will be in that area and that area is going to be really bot resistant right one thing is combat level and then uh i don't know what else they're going to be adding it's all brand new but i'm sure there's going to be a couple more limitations to being in that spot too which i am for depending on what they are i think this is fantastic i I really want to get her to come on the podcast to talk about mm -hmm. this because, like, she's obviously amazing at art, but she's obviously not just an artist. Is in she has a lot of like ideas here, like this right here, for example, this rat with the ancient staff. This, as yeah. far as I can recall, is supposed to be like an NPC that is supposed to act like a player. So you can go and like hybrid fight against this thing. It's like a boss. And it should react like a player. And I think that it's supposed to be for like newer people that want to learn how to like, do you know what I mean? I'm saying like, she's, she's thinking about stuff outside of the box. That's not just the artwork. Like she's actually yeah. putting a lot of thought behind a lot of this. 
But yeah, I'd love to. Have I a like chat that idea. Her. Imagine it chases you when you're low on food. You're like, oh, I'm good now. He's just fucking hunting you down. <laughs> That'd be sweet, bro. Bryce ain't feeling it. No, no. <laughs> yeah, bro. To be fair, it's quite fitting that Rice missed out on the podcast today because, like, my my boy literally is like that in the PVP podcast. <laughs> <laughs> He's over here just like looking at his fingers and shit. <laughs> But yeah, this this looks fantastic, man. I, I'm like this. This is the thing, right? I, I feel like we're all a little bit like this now, especially us PVPers. Is like see stuff like this, and it's like, okay, it looks amazing. Will it ever come into the game? Exactly. You know, and yeah. I think that's the, that's just one of those things about PVP. But I, I think that probably one of the things is like where it's so much information in one place it's kind of like it's a bit overwhelming and i think a lot of people would probably be hesitant to vote yes purely from that but i think that if they were to introduce it into layers like maybe if they were to introduce firstly the expansion of the wilderness is fucking sick like do that and introduce the new uh safe city with the safe quest and then slowly start adding more stuff or maybe add like a few of the bosses and then go into more detail like down the line. It'll probably be like Zaya when in, in case the viewers don't know when Zaya first came out, it was a blank slate. It looked real yeah. pretty. I mean, everyone was complaining, where's the content? And it was like, they're gonna build, they're gonna build. And then they added a Slayer dungeon and then Corinne, all that shit. So I, I have a feeling like there's gonna be a nice landscape, maybe a couple things to do. Um, Tom, honestly, on the top of your head, what are you most excited for out of all of this stuff in the game jam if if it were to come out? What are you talking about this this thing specifically yeah, for the Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I don't know, like I haven't skimmed through this. I know a couple of the bosses, but when it comes to text, my brain dies. It just shuts off. So Yeah, um Honestly, like th well, this stuff here, a lot of this stuff is new. I've seen like the first one, and I know they were talking about doing like multi revs, uh, and they were talking mm -hmm. about I, I think they were talking about like a a dragon boss uh that was up here. But I, I think the thing for me like the thing that I look forward to the most and call me childish is just the thought of being able to go past Mage Bank. Like Mage mm. Mage Bank is like a place that I hold like super. There's a lot of sentiment to Mage Bank that I ha hold. So it's like I've always thought, what's on the other side of the sea, or like you know they could push this out. I remember like when I was uh, a PKR back in the day, like walking along the line the most northern line of the wilderness to see what like the deepest level of the wildy was, and I think at the time it was. I think it was potentially on like the volcano area was like the furthest level you could go to or something like that. So yeah, like them just pushing the wilderness level up for me is like, that's exciting in itself. Uh, in terms of the content, I probably wouldn't bother with doing like multi revs unless I was just having fun with like the boys or something. Um, but I'd be interested in seeing them do like another dragon boss up there for sure. I, I think that would be super, super interesting. And if if I remember correctly, I think they said that it was gonna be Nope, never mind. I'm thinking of the uh the Wildy Boss rework. They said that it's gonna be on par with the Vorcap GP you get per hour. But yeah, I think that I think there being a, a new dragon up there, a red dragon in the lava volcano spot. Could be super interesting. Hey, do you have any um you ready to go? Go for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I was just going to say, I think this is hopefully what the wilderness will look like in five years or ten years, you know? Mm. I feel like this is kind of a vision for what could we do to the wilderness in the future. And like you said earlier, Rixie, like they can just add stuff year on year, add small updates, do it like they've done with the wilderness changes uh, with the bosses, and just make sure the community is happy with what's going in. And, you know, update the wilderness like that. And I think, that, again, this just shows there's so many cool ideas that you could add to the wilderness and so many things you could do with it. It's just a matter of time to an extent, I guess. Yeah. Are you uh, interested about anything on um, on this page being worked on first or any, any favorites? <laughs> I haven't looked at it in detail, and I'd have to look at it in detail to make sure. It actually How about just going off the pictures, then? That's kind of fun. Anything uh, that catches your eye? I, I need to get it bigger, because I can't see it too uh, The well. one that catches my eye is this one in the... The one that's above the rat. It looks like Nex, but like a corrupted ah. version of Nex. I th or or uh, Commander Zeliana. Sure. Like it looks, oh, yeah, hey. yeah. It looks fucking so cool. There we go. This guy here I, I, looks like a Digimon. 
<laughs> he kind of yeah. looked, yeah, dude. I swear it's like one of the newer Pokemon Dragon Flying types, the big old fucking blockhead, bro. I feel I like know, there's like a lot of like almost like anime inspiration through some of these designs, oh, like especially this dude here in the top left. Loves but, it. Yeah, this like this dude here. I feel like I've seen this somewhere or <laughs> something similar to this with like the skulls. Yeah, it's a bionicle and shit. there. It's a <laughs> kind of like a, a steampunk vibe, honestly. A little I, bit. I, I think, think if I've seen it right. What I, what so I would art. love to see, like straight up love to see though, is I, I think all of this stuff looks fantastic. I would love for there to be uh, like a massive boss up there that was like more human than like these creatures. Like a human which is fucked up, maybe like some Torva warrior or something like that who's a massive badass Chad. Like for, for me, ideally... I would love for there to be a dungeon in the deepest part of the wilderness where there's a fucking boss that is almost impossible to kill on your own, so you need people to kill it, and it needs to be a team work and collaboration mm -hmm. in order to kill that boss. Almost something of the scale of like a world boss. I think that would be the sickest thing ever. It's just whether or not Jagex would ever do that. I think if they did, I think that PKers would just be fucking happy for like the next 10 years, you know? <laughs> I was mm -hmm. going to say, I think I've picked my uh, my favourite, and it is the Wilderness World boss in the bottom left. I think something that spawns in different locations, and you go there with your friends to go kill it, would be awesome. Because you just, you attract a bunch of people to it, and they're probably all going to be PvPers, and are looking for fights. So I'm I think just sitting there with my really claws fun. every yeah. day, bro. Yeah, oh. like, that, that'd be so <laughs> much fun. So time to buy all the that, dark bows and ring of stones, boys. It's time, dude. That is it's time. Do you guys remember when Ronan used to run around on the stream and like spawn loads of party hats and stuff in the wilderness and loads of people would go? Because yeah. he, he, he did that for like a couple of streams and I had so much fun just going there and killing all the people that were <laughs> killing the noobs. Because there were so many like newbie yeah. PKs just running around trying to kill them all and it, it made so much activity. It was just so much fun. Dude, mm -hmm. that's reminded me. There was there's like a historical clip when Mod Mac K worked at jagex and i think we spoke about this on the podcast we did with him where he used to like effectively go somewhere create an environment and people could go and watch and he'd stream it of him killing like armadillo a thousand mm. times now the first time that he did it armadillo like it's like range attack where it attacks the room was fucking hitting the crowd it's like people yeah. spectators that had gone there with their banks were just getting killed <laughs> left right and center and <laughs> there's there's like there's live stream footage of it like i remember watching a video a while back it was like uh maybe like the story of mod mac k or something like that it's fucking hilarious you just see people like popping out the portal and then you see like the gusts of wind like fucking killing them all <laughs> any hardcores dude that'd be funny as shit dude. i don't i think that pe it was at the time though when people possibly lost their items on death where like yeah, shit would like spawn. i'm pretty sure yeah, yeah. it was pre-iron man i think Dude, that was oh that was shit. shit. That's how early it was. Yeah, I think maybe then. Honestly, you might be onto something there. So I gotta go watch that. I have an opinion on PvP, which I know is vastly different from a lot of people. I know this goes against. Uh, I think Dino has a very different opinion on this than me. I think Mint might do as well. Um, my opinion on PvP is this, and there's a lot, a lot to unpack here. But like, just a little side part of pvp in terms of the future of pvp now i love this stuff i think this looks fantastic but like i said i'm a little apprehensive on whether or not this would pass the poll whether the community would take this and it would actually go anywhere with it because we've seen stuff like this in the past and it's not gone down as well as we'd hope right so Something that people talk about quite often, I've heard Mint talk about it, I've heard Dino talk about it, he spoke on the podcast about it, is Last Man Standing and how people mm -hmm. hate LMS. People say LMS, some people say it's the best thing ever, some people say it's the worst thing that was ever creative, and from what I've been able to gauge from people that dislike it, is that they don't like the fact that it's giving people an outlet to go and PK with no risk, and therefore taking them away from the wilderness. I don't necessarily see it like that. I kind of see it as this is a model of PvP that players have enjoyed. It's something that people obviously are interested in. It's been successful. I'd say arguably some of the most successful content, especially when it comes to getting new players into PvP. 
and and I think that it's like a model that definitely shouldn't be looked down on. It's something with potential, like that could be grown. They could make more things that are along those lines. Don't get me wrong. I think that they need to do stuff like this as well. And I think they need to do Bounty Hunter. They need to do Wilderness. They need to do all of that stuff. But there's a massive potential in PvP with the the risk-freeness to it. And, and I don't think that the future of PvP necessarily has to be you go in the wilderness and lose your stuff. I, I think that that can be a part of it, but I think that there should also be other varieties of things that you can do. Because the, the thing is with PvP is like, I feel like for most people, it's like you have to be in a certain mindset to be happy to go into the wilderness, risk items, and it doesn't matter how experienced you are. There's days where it's like, oh, I don't want to risk much today, or I'm just going to take a basic setup. It's nice to have an alternative option where it's like you don't even need to think about that. It's just like I'm going to go mindlessly do something with no risk, which is fun. Um, so I was just wondering, man, that was one hell of a fucking statement there. Sorry, man. <laughs> uh, I, was, I was just wondering how you see it, Manked, because I don't think we've spoken about this. So how, how do you feel on them, the difference between risky wilderness content and then uh, the non-risky stuff? Um, I think it's a good place for people to get like their foot in the water so they can experience it a little bit. Like uh, There was a, a streamer who started streaming RuneScape recently. He started playing old school recently. He'd never played it before. Oh, sorry, he played it years and years and years ago. Uh, called Zizaren and he went to LMS and he was like dude this is the best thing ever I am fighting people and he was having so much fun with it and he basically learned what PvP was through that and I, I gave him some tips and he started winning more fights and he got a rune pouch and he was really happy with himself and I think having that yeah just gives people a taste of what PV can, PvP can be like I think the best way to get people into PvP to an extent is multi because you just go with your friends, you go to just have fun basically, yeah. and you do you do have fun the majority of the time until you get hit by like a massive team, but it, it is what it is. Um, I think that's like a really good way for people to get into PvP with low risk, um, and it's kind of just a step up from LMS, I guess. But I think LMS is fine, um, I don't see much, much of an issue with it. Um, yeah, no, I think it's good. Okay. Do do yeah. you think that there is any um do you think that there is much like future in releasing content for Jagex down the line which is going to be more risk-free mini games or would you prefer it to stay inside of the wilderness or would you prefer a bit of both? Um I would say they should probably make small changes to LMS because I know there are some people that do complain like they don't like how there's three different modes and stuff so i think tweaking it to adapt it to be catering to more people but then focusing the rest of the effort on making the wilderness actually viable uh, because my my overall thought process after playing iron man in the wilderness is change i know a lot of people that like the wilderness probably hate me for saying this but i think the wilderness should be a place where you know what to expect when you're going there so from my point of view I, I would love to see them remove the wildy steps from uh, normal clue scrolls, place them elsewhere in the game. Uh, just like you keep the same item requirements so you don't mess with people that have specifically grinded an item for a wildy clue step. Yeah. So you change that and then you add wilderness only clue scrolls so nice. that you can get when you're doing, let's say, just wildy slayer. So if you're doing Wildy Slayer, you want to be in the, you're, you're in the wilderness for a reason doing Wildy Slayer, and then you're going to get a Wildy clue, and you're probably already comfortable with being in the wilderness because you're doing that. So what that does is it stops people that are just doing normal clue scrolls, that are just chilling, you know, having a good time. It stops them from feeling forced to go into the wilderness, um, and then it enables people that are already in the wilderness to do that wilderness content more as well. And I think just mm-hmm. catering stuff like that to make sure we're not force forcing. I really disagree with forcing people to go into the wilderness. Yeah. I really disagree with that statement. I think everything's mm-hmm. a choice in the wilderness, you know? You can either get the item or not. But I think there are certain things that could be improved to make players want to go there and not not feel like they hate the wilderness because they're forced to go there, you know? Yeah. Everything's a choice. And then everything that they do in the wilderness will hopefully... Um, have better reactions and yeah I, I think the um 
the relationship between the rest of the game and PvPers will be a lot better. Yeah, yeah, that's a it's great a good point, a, man. I really like that idea I, as well. With the clues. Expanding on Wilderness Slayer like that too would be so fun, bro. Wilderness Superiors, Wilderness Clues. I mean, we could we could have more of the Laren's chest be more wilderness related as well. And uh, before we continue on this subject, it's, honestly, I love wilderness clue idea. Um, to give my thoughts on LMS, because I just wanted to say it out there. I think it's great. I think it's fun. I do think it does help people get into the wilderness, even though there's not much to bring people in the wilderness at the moment. But that's going to change soon, hopefully. Uh, my biggest thing, though, is that it's risk-free and you can make money oh so easily i mean remember uh right when you're doing your group uh, iron man and you're like my number one thing is to get into lms just to grind out rune arrows mm -hmm. like that was your strategy that is insane that it's just so free money it is backed by skill and i don't mind that it's free money it's more so that the idea that blighted items in the game are coming not from the wilderness I feel like the opportunity for blighted items to come just from the wilderness to have a bunch of wilderness content added on from these blighted items has been missed so hard. Like think about, and this is one of my favorite ideas um, just off the top of my head, like wilderness room crafting. We could have had a whole different kind of skill where you just have this obelisk in a dangerous area. You bring the runes you need, you bring maybe some effort or something else and you make these pouches and you can make as many as you want doesn't matter. You're, you're doing it slowly and someone come kill you for it. Instead, we have them farmed from these bots that are doing LMS. Let's be real. Most are bots. It's kind of an opportunity missed. I'd like to see them expanding because if they do that, then the, the wilderness feeds into itself like an ecosystem. Yeah. Right. And that's kind of my, what I want to see in the future is that a full self-sufficient ecosystem in the wild. I'll yeah. just keep it alive. That, that's yeah, very similar to how I think as well for the wilderness. It is it is very weird how you can. I, I've always thought this like playing it as an Iron Man on Group Iron Man was the last Iron Man account I played, and it's like you can just go do LMS and get like rune arrows and dragon bolts. Like what is that? Like it's it's Please. so bizarre. It does feel like strange. Honestly, I think that's that's a fair point, and I think to add on to what you said, so. I, what I'd like to do is ask you, Manx, if there was one piece of PvP content or just general content you could change or implement into the game, what would it be? And before you say yours, I'll quickly say mine, and I'll give my reason for this, is I hear pretty much all PKers that do single PKing, they complain about the Revenants. And, you know, I don't know if this is them just, like, venting and it's just a bad day or if they're fire tired of the same thing but i hear the same kind of stuff like mint says where it's like it's a dull environment it's the same colors it's bland and it just feels like you're doing the same thing something i would really love to do if i could implement any update into the wilderness what i would do is i would change the slayer cave and the way that i would change it is i would make it so there are and i'd probably keep the one that there is already maybe shrink it a little bit and then just put like maybe four, maybe five different rev caves that are scattered across the wilderness in different wilderness levels and make the environments inside completely different. Like you could go inside of one and it's like, it's up by the um the volcano and maybe there's like, you know, there's like uh, almost like zenite crystals in there and there's like lava, like waterfalls and shit and there's revenants in there. And then there's like, you know, there could be somewhere else where there's like purple crystals and shit and like there's revenants inside there. And so just just so they're like a little bit more scattered out because I think that that would be a nice thing for PVPers to be like, okay, I can go elsewhere and find people because wherever there are people killing the revenants, which there's always going to be an incentive to do so because as a PVMer, I want to get a cave to myself so I can make loads of money. And as a PKer, I want to go and find that person. And then as another PKR, it's like, okay, well, there's competition there. I can go there and I can fight the PKR. Or I can kill the PVMer. That's what I would like to do. Yeah, okay. Um, I'm not going to say... Oh, oh, here he is! <laughs> Yo, Rice He's Cut. woken up. Hold yeah, up, I, was, I was trying to see if you guys were, like, finishing or something, because like, I didn't want to join in if you guys were, like, wrapping up, you know? But... No, did you? Well, you're here now, mate. You can't pop out. <laughs> All right. Why yeah, yeah, no. My apologies, guys. My apologies. 
I forgot today was the podcast day. I, I didn't today. even set up an alarm. Otherwise, I probably would have made it. But yeah, I stayed up way too late doing combat achievements. So. Hey, do, but yeah, we I'm just going to listen. Let you guys do your thing. It's all good, bro. Have you seen what your picture is for the podcast yet? I think you're going to be a fan. I of see it. it. Yeah, I see it. I see it. I see it. <laughs> <laughs> There we go. Mate, listen, yeah, I, yeah. I, I don't mind, but you know, Manx, do you accept his apology or do you want to tell him to fuck I, off? Yeah, no, apologies, <laughs> Mr. Manx. No, no, the apology is accepted. I, I've enjoyed that picture, so uh, you're off the hook, <laughs> don't worry. Well, yeah, hey, luckily you guys, you know, you got two lovely fellows that, that role pro you know, probably kept kept the discussion going the whole time. Mate, so. it's, it's been like, I would say probably a good 80 percent pvp <laughs> yeah no it's so uh, yeah it's it's all good like you know yeah it's all good so I, I was just asking manx if there was a, a pvp update or any update what would he put into the game if he could and also yeah. did you like my idea about the uh the revenant caves being scattered out and like varied in shape and color yes and no i think the worry with diversifying like where you can go uh, just for like one activity could encourage bots because if it, if it's easy to hide if there's like five different places in the wilderness you can go to it might be quite easy to it it'll ruin the kind of risk versus reward mate potentially um, okay because because yeah if there's so many places to check pks might not check them and then their people are just going to farm them for free basically so you'd have to be careful with that but other than that yeah no it'd be cool to see different environments Okay. Um, but for my overall thing I'd change, I'd just change how the dynamics of the wilderness work. So obviously earlier I said I'd love to see people going to the wilderness because they want to be there and not because they feel forced. I would make hopefully what the wildy bosses have done and, and what their mechanics are, are mechanics that kind of force you to play in a way where you're prepared to counter someone PKing you. So maybe the bosses force mechanics where you have to use two styles of uh, combat. So maybe range and melee, or maybe they have a mechanic where loads of spiders spawn and you need to barrage those spiders to, um, to, to kill them fast. Otherwise they heal it really fast. Kind of like top maybe where those spiders heal it, but you make people bring a setup that will not only help them beat the boss, but it'll also help them protect themselves from PKs. Because at the moment, and for the past 10 years or 17 years, or however long the wilderness has been around and been active, it's always been a PKer goes after a weak PVMer. The PVMer can't really fight back because they don't have the gear or supplies. And it's just, a, it's a really one-sided fight and it's really unfair. So I'd love to see bosses drop supplies while you're killing them so you can stay almost as long as you want but the longer you stay the more you risk mm -hmm. and then you can also because you're kind of forced to to you do these mechanics that um force you to fight with like multiple styles you can also fight back against speakers so it then just becomes a risk versus reward um just just by um you being greedy and staying there longer to get more kills but you're fine to fight back. I, I think that would be like yeah. my ideal wilderness. So so you're basically, it would pretty much force people to be better equipped when going in. Like if you don't, yeah. if you don't take freezes, for example, that you're going to be at such a, a huge disadvantage. Um, and also real, real quick to rebuttal what you said about the, uh, the Revenant caves being spread out. So mm. your fear would be that they'd be so spread out that people would just get away with it for free. So I, I think my argument to that would be, well, what it could do as well is it could encourage more people to PK, to PK. But then again, you're right, because it's like, if it's too free, then even the PVPers might eventually be like, well, it's more profitable to do the PVM side than it is the PVP. But what they could do, which I think would make sense, is if like the lower rev caves that are in like lower wilderness maybe had like lower level revenants. And potentially that would be more of a like that would be like the spot for the pures to go. So like if you're a pure, you probably want to check like the lower caves versus the mains that want to check the high tier ones, or maybe the med levels that want to go to the middle ones. But yeah, I, I can see, I can see what you're saying. And um, yeah, I think the idea of um, taking necessary steps out of the wilderness, I'm like blurry. Um, 
cool. for, for like Iron Man and people that don't want to be in there. I think that's a good idea. Um, we recently had Josh on in our last podcast, and I think it was it was either Josh that said it or it was somebody else that I heard it from. And they were basically just talking about the significance of the dragon pickaxe and then upgrading that to the crystal pickaxe, which you can only do with a dragon pickaxe, versus the rune pickaxe. And like when when you actually listen to the statistics on how much better it is, it's like you would actually be dumb not to get the dragon pickaxe. And unfortunately, up until recently, it's literally been locked in the wilderness. Now, I've said this for a while. I've always had the thought of, okay, I'm fine with them taking out things in the wilderness where, you know, clue scrolls and clue steps, etc. like you said. Because I'm not a massive fan of the whole, like, I feel like it's like a bullyish environment in some ways, where it's just like, it's the strong pick and on the weak. And like, at the end of the day, if the only people you can kill are people that are doing clue scrolls, then you probably suck, to be honest mm-hmm. with you. So I don't really have any time or sympathy for those people, in all honesty. So, like, I don't have a problem with them removing things from the wilderness for people that don't want to be there and get them elsewhere in the game. Um, I, I think the one thing that I will say to that, though, is it would be nice if that happens, like it is, if it would mean that the people who do wilderness content have more of a say on the updates that come into the game, such as what you can see on screen right now, is in, because the people who do PvP and are in the wilder are gonna be people doing this, it makes more sense to me for those people to have a better, bigger say, maybe an extra vote. I don't know how that would work, but but I, I personally think that would be more fair, but what, what do you think about that? Um, well, for the longest time, I always wanted like a council to be able to basically say, that it would be a council of various people, so PVMers, Iron Men, PKers. Would I um, make it in there? Would I be? Yeah, well, dude, we'll have, like, <laughs> what kind like, of shirt would I be wearing? You're the wilderness shirt. god, bro. Yeah. Would it be uh, yeah. signed by you? <laughs> uh, maybe. All right. Um, yeah, just just to have like a variety of opinions that, and they can then discuss like ideas because, obviously, polling is really difficult, and I think the biggest issue with polling is the uh, lack of. Uh, knowledge that yeah, people 100%. people kind of just vote without actually reading anything. They see wilderness, they vote no, and that's why the re- the recent uh, polls were pretty good because they they worded everything really well and explained it really well. And so so I think that's like the biggest issue. Obviously, I don't think RuneScape's going to get rid of polling. They lowered it to seventy percent, right? So yeah, they did. That's like the yeah, that's the closest thing I think. So you can't really do anything like that and i don't know if if restricting polls is actually a good thing because at the end of the day although it, it depends what the content is if it because for me obviously i've been a pvp for so long and whenever i've seen updates that would purely only be a benefit and not a negative at all not get into the game it's always really frustrated me mm-hmm. but i guess you should give everyone a say even if they don't necessarily do it because they might do it in the future. It's really difficult, but you shouldn't... If, if you restrict the polling, you might as well just do the updates you want to do anyway, right? To an extent. So it's yeah, really difficult. I, I think my, my argument to that would just be a case of like, well, if there's somebody who has never been in the wilderness and is very unlikely to ever go into the wilderness, then why should their vote stop something coming into the game that could be a net positive for the game and for others but i i do see what you're saying it is a bit of a slippery slope um but i do know that jagex have they have played around with it actually with um i I don't know how they worded it but they did some voting a while back on some wilderness content that they polled and it was like they basically tracked the accounts that do pvp versus the accounts that don't do pvp and they took that into consideration I don't know what they called it. I don't know if it was like uh I, I can't remember the wording of it. Um but but funnily enough, I can't remember what the update was. This isn't very helpful, but they basically said the content and what they polled didn't pass, and even with uh the no votes like from people that don't do PvP, it's like without that, it still wouldn't have passed because it just wasn't pitched like correctly. But mm-hmm. I, I don't know. I, I think that when you've got a tiny piece of the game and a tiny part of the community, specifically the wilderness and PvP, when that thing's so niche and it's like 
you know, it, it's like if they were to take everything out of the wilderness that you you ever had to do on a regular account or an Iron Man account, and like there was no reason to go there other than wanting to, I think that at that point we probably, I think it would make sense to explore the option of maybe having more uh restricted votes on it or or something like that but hey we're a long way from that like they literally have to remove like the major arena two cape they, they'd have to like move that out the wilderness as well because that's at this point probably one of the last things that you'd want to get from the wildy i, I think believe. that'd be fine though because major so. arena two cape it, it's quite a big upgrade you don't have to risk anything really to do it you, you're going there specifically to get that upgrade so I think you're like prepared and mentally you know there might be PKs, so it's not too bad. But whereas when you're doing a clue scroll, you, you're running around the rest of the game and then, oh, you get a worldy step and now you have to de-gear and re-gear to do it. And I think that's kind of different. So I think major in a cape would be fine to leave in there. Um, but yeah, um, no, for, for sure it would be, yeah. So, so mate, uh, yeah, just to Whoa. touch... On, right, so yo, yo, I'm here. What's going on here? Yo, you <laughs> no, wake I'm, up? I'm here now, I'm here now. I'm Whoa, here now. For a bit, just for a brief appearance. So, like, to touch on what, you know, Rixie said, what Josh, um, so I, I think I want to, I want to kind of, like, be a bit more specific, right, um, for my point here, because I think that there is definitely a balance between, um, obviously, uh, updating the wilderness so that it's profitable, right, for people to go and do it, versus, like, say, add something that is profitable, but also just so core to a certain gameplay outside of the wilderness, right? I think I think like things like revs or you know doing a clue scroll or you know uh, up upgrades to the wildy weapons th those are more profitable things for people, right? Like people do it so that they can make money, but it's not like you're forced to go to the wilderness to make more money, right? I feel like that's always been actually fine, and not many people really complain about that because nowadays you have so many PVM options for, to make money, anyways, right? Like I think it's actually fine to add things to the wilderness that makes a lot of money just don't make it like dragon pickaxes right because i feel like a lot of the complaints are typically things like dragon pickaxe you know because you got to go there to get such a useful item and then people have to deal with pvp elements you know just to get something that useful like why kill rex for a dragon axe when you have to go to wilderness and deal with pkers and things like that for a dragon pickaxe thing you know what i mean so yeah. it's like yeah. Making money, I feel like that's core of wilderness. A lot, a, I think there is a balance, right? It's not just that, like, oh, if you keep uh, adding things to wilderness to attract people that isn't PKers there, that is a bad thing. It's not really necessarily a bad thing because, like, if if it's just oh, you know, revs make more money, then it's like people will go there to make money, right? And and it's not necessarily you're forced there, right? It's just like more money, but there's so many options to make money anyways, right? So it's I don't think that's really was all of the problem right i feel like that's what people always used to say like or, or still do but like like the past years they'll always say like yeah these you know money making methods don't don't really help but i think it does it's just a matter of what those items are that you're implementing right yeah if it's just yeah, resource yeah. drops whatever you know like yeah. really niche items whatever i think, -picks, I think you're nah, right. too much i, I yeah. think when you're talking about items that are essential and i would argue essential uh, to progress in an account, any account, especially like an Iron Man that can't go and easily buy it off the Grand Exchange, you run into an issue. At the end of the day, it's like if you're just doing your money making inside of the wilderness through wilderness activities, you're not really living in 2022 because there's just so many good money makers outside of the world. It's absolutely insane. Uh, I'm looking at you, Mint. Looking at you, buddy. Zora. <laughs> <laughs> just Zora and Rev. But but yeah, I agree. <laughs> I, I think uh, I think you know that I don't think they should lock key items to account progress in the wilderness. I I think we're past that. I I think that like looking at what's on the screen right now, like this, the potential for all of this, the ideas. Um, I I, I think that hopefully we're past it. Hopefully you know going forward, it's going to be less about oh, what item can we force players into the wilderness to get? And more mm -hmm. of, like, the content is so fucking good, you might just want to do this content, even if you're going to die, or even if you have to make another account that you don't care yeah, about. Yeah, or, so or the it. profit, right? Or the profit yeah. is so good and consistent that it's okay to die, because you'll make yeah. money. Anyways. Um, 
I'm but yeah. you, year 2023, man, that is the year mm-hmm. of PVP. The wind is behind us. Every time you guys talk, by the way, with Rice Bag, I just I look at Rice and he's sleeping. I'm like, damn, he really doesn't care about me. <laughs> 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 not any of what you're saying, rather like, wait, no, that's a picture. <laughs> Yo, I'm but- sleep talking, bro. Mangus, I'm sleep talking. <laughs> tell tell Rice Cup about uh, your news because Rice wasn't here for it. Oh, yeah, I missed like 90 percent of this, so. <laughs> uh, yeah, basically, I teased both of them, and I didn't tell them that I am going to be employed by Jagex. Uh, oh January, shit! January Yo, this is this Yo, is the world first rats. exclusive rice. Nobody wow, knows wow. about this online apart from us. That's actually crazy, dude. Yeah, That's yeah, actually I'm crazy. Gonna... I mean, based on you know the conversation we had before, and a little bit today, you know, I cause like I I I woke up and I was scrolling through the chat to see what you guys talk about, right, and all that. But yeah, I, I feel like you would definitely be a very important uh, facet to to the old school team. Just because I feel like I, I don't want to like you know I don't want to be like too rude to the current Jaggers. I feel like right now, obviously, there's like a new kind of like a new culture to old school uh, team t- uh, Jaggers teams where it might be a little bit too radical. You know, like I feel like every year we're, lately we're drifting a, a bit away from old school. A, a bit too much right like what makes old school old school so i feel like you're you know you're an og you've been around for a long time you know kind of, kind of like just in your in your instinct right like you just know what makes old school old school so hopefully with your you know pvp knowledge runescape knowledge and just the fact that you've been around for so long you know you can kind of like help solidify that old school culture keep it there you know yeah preserve it it's really yeah. important I, yeah i think i said this earlier but I think at the moment I, I've I've had the most faith in the mods that I've had in years. I, I don't know why, but it's just I feel like they're all the communication more good. open. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And like I feel like there's a lot of hope for future content. Uh, so I'm, I'm I'm really excited to to work there and talk to everyone because I know how passionate they are. And oh, yeah. Whenever I hear Husky go on as one of his rambles, I absolutely love it, and I I pray to God when I'm at the office, I can talk to him and he can just ramble and just talk to me yeah. about his ideas because they're so amazing. Exciting. He's a very he's very yeah. passionate about his work, and that's what you love to see. Yeah, but I remember one of my first interactions with him when he first got employed. I think was at a dead man mode. And he, would, he just started talking to me about his ideas for it. And I was like, oh, my God, these sound so amazing. So hopefully in the future, I can work with him and, and maybe work on dead mans or leagues. And I think that's where so much uh, the, the, the possibilities are endless for, bro, for leagues and stuff. I've just had like Campbell's I've, chicken noodle soup, bro. I've just I've just had like a, an image of our future and I can just see us with you and husky on the podcast like discussing some fucking badass update or like a leagues or a dead man mode that would that would be amazing um the next dead man mode is gonna be uh commentated by the osr's podcast it's already locked in uh, <laughs> right gonna be like that down <laughs> you're just sitting there on the stage well dude i think <laughs> We've been going now for about two hours. I know that you now have a regular sleeping pattern. And by yeah. the way, but what is your day to day at the moment? Are you working or are you just studying? Like, what's your deal, dude? Well, I should have asked. Okay, this. I'll, I'll, I'll go in. Yeah, quick, quick um, summary. So I've I've pretty much just been coding, learning to code and program for the last uh, year. Um, obviously, when I didn't get the position like six weeks ago, I thought, okay, I would love to wait for another position to come out, uh, come to be open in six months. But I, I was scared that I wouldn't be able to, you know, financially uh, keep afloat, essentially. So yeah. I actually started doing a different course, and then this came about. So uh, this opportunity came about. So then I applied for it, and luckily everything's good. So now I can purely focus on game design um and actually starting and and learning all of that man, so yeah right now i'm doing nothing i'm, man, just, I'm nice. i i inspired. am i'm so happy for you like genuinely i am i've this has made my day and it will continue <laughs> to make my week most likely i don't see anything top in this um yeah. if i may put in a humble request when you get to jagex <laughs> if you if you can try and encourage them to do some more like community events and like you know more more meetups content creators rune fest like those kind of things like i I think that's something that's kind of gone in the last two Mm -hmm. years and obviously because of the you know 
the world situation and stuff it's understandable but it would be amazing to get that back like you know the meetups the rune fests like all of that stuff i i feel like it's something which has been highly missed in the last in the last two years so if you can if you can put in a good word for that stuff that'd be great man but i, I mean uh, when we were talking earlier about soup doing the the Gillenor games and how those events are so cool i would love to be able to like host events where it's just a bunch of uh, content creators that participate in a, a funky event that's maybe a different and like every month we have like maybe just a for fun event but it's something loads of people loads of content creators can play or maybe just loads of players can play and just have fun you know because yeah. I, I think that'd be awesome it, it could depending on what it was it could be relatively low effort and all the content creators could just record and stream their own perspectives and make videos about it I, i'd love to do that in the future as well um, god that'd be big oh, that'd be so dude. big yeah Imagine, imagine doing like um, I think they've said this in the past, like clan cup, where it's like you can register like your clan for like a wilderness only mm. challenge, and it's like okay, so your goal for the wilderness cha- like a bingo, it's like okay, so you get points for everything you do, and like your team can get you points. It's like if you get an ancient relic, if you get a PvP weapon, you get an amount of points. If you get a goddamn visage, <laughs> you're gaming. There's there's a lot of potential, man. I love it. I really do. Yeah. I'm really excited to see. <sighs> Um, what I do, I can't wait for this podcast to come out because I'm so hyped, and I, I can't yeah. wait for Jagex to like. Is there an official announcement they're gonna do for you when you when you join? Do you know? Uh, I don't think so. I asked them if it was okay for me to discuss it because I didn't know like if they wanted to do anything specific or if I could just say um that I was gonna be working there. So uh, that that was all fine. I don't think they're doing anything special. I was gonna tweet it like during this but i'll just i'll tweet it probably tomorrow that i've actually uh got the job um, oh my god yeah yeah dude that that'd be great because uh yeah when we when we do like the title and also when we tweet this out obviously with your permission we'd like to put something along the lines of like <laughs> newly acquired mod manked like oh yeah. dude Ooh. Oh, or like they may join the Jagex Force or some shit. <laughs> Old school team or something. PK yeah. or sneaks into the team or something. <laughs> Man, yeah. Mank, do you need to convince them to do more content creator stuff? I want to be up in Cambridge and Anandos with you discussing Dude, Deadman yeah. mode. Like I miss that stuff, man. I just remember content event, uh, content creator events being so motivating. Like you'd you'd go to it and afterwards you'd be like, oh my god, dude, I want to grind. I want to pump yeah. out so many videos and it was always a really inspiring yeah moment so i i don't know if i i, I have no idea what i'm going to be able to do what my input's going to be but i i would love to do that in the future so yeah hopefully there's a uh, room for me to do that but i have no idea awesome all right dude well listen man it's been a goddamn pleasure we love you bro it really has been a pleasure um what are your social medias? What would you like to shout out, dude? Well, hopefully I'll be Jagex Manked on Twitter soon, but I, I have oh, no shit. idea. Again, I have oh, no shit. idea. Um, so right now, at, at this moment, I'm just uh, twitter.com forward slash manked at mage, um, twitch.tv manked. I'll probably chuck up some streams when the Wilderness Boss rework happens because I'm so excited for Karasi, dude. I'm going to oh, play yeah. so much with that. It's going to be so much fun. Um, oh, yeah, but dude. yeah, thank you for having oh, me. It's been a great chat. It was a pleasure, yeah. man. Always yeah, apologies for the super super late arrival, but I'm really happy to hear that you're joining Jagex though, you know? Yeah. Like after what, like two two years ago when you said you wanted to get in on it? Yeah, it was literally oh, yeah. uh this time last year, uh like the fourteenth of December last year was my last full time stream. Um so yeah, it's been it's been a year minus two days. Oh, oh okay. Damn. Damn nice. A man on a mission and he's accomplished yeah. his goal. I'm I'm fucking stoked for you, man. I really am. <laughs>